Hello, sumo fans. Welcome back. I feel like this was a tournament for the fans. This was for us. Yes, this was uh, this was a wild one. Oh man, we all I've, everybody got something out of this. Like that somebody who's invested in sumo was like, "There's going to be that one thing for you in January." I feel like that's that's what's going on. I'm so excited for this. Well, we're going to go over our checklist, and surprisingly enough, we had a lot of things like almost be 100% correct. I was surprised. If we play horseshoes, we did pretty well for ourselves. Much better than our predictions for you show winners. <laughs> I came close until they... Well, we you did come close. Close-ish. Ish. I'm um, cursed, so forget me <laughs> ever predicting you show winners again. So first and foremost, congratulations to... Terado Fuji. Who is just menacing this opening page now. I, get, I, keep, I say this every time, and I will keep saying it. These these new-ish, like, splash screens, they're just, they're just gorgeous. And it's almost like getting a gift when you open up the page. You're like, oh, look the, at this. <laughs> it's so good. It also means that if you haven't watched, you haven't watched the last day. Don't go on the website. Yeah. <laughs> Should be right there. Avoid at all costs. All costs. So, before we start at the top, there is a. I want to uh, make an honorable mention to the forty third Ricochet this tournament, which is injuries. Yeah, they injuries get an MVP award. They oh goodness gracious! They were that this is this has been something that has been problematic for some time now but this one i feel really affected a lot of things and just there's a a sort of a an almost an asterisk yeah it's almost like the covid years like all these guys out for covid it was as bad as that in fact when we were doing the live streams i did not verify but this was thrown out there that this was the most kujo uh kujo since the covid ones we had seven and these are like legit serious injuries. Yeah. So there's going to be this something or other about people needing to stay healthy. Also a sign of older average ranges, people pushing them, their bodies past their limits. A lot of um, issues. Yes. So we'll obviously talk about it while it's pertinent, but I just wanted to say, you know, let's get let's get some people a little bit gentler. On the exercises, let's not yeah. Let, let's not destroy ourselves, or there will be no sumo. There will be no sumo. We're gonna run out of it. So, in any case, we will start at the top and coincidentally start with the U show winner, Terano Fuji, thirteen and two. And I don't think anybody in the first week thought Terano Fuji was gonna finish, let alone run away with the entire thing. But by week two, there were rumblings. People were starting to say, "Wait a minute, this is." Somehow he's fighting through, and he seems to be getting stronger. He was getting settled in the uh, any nerves, well, not nerves, but like, like like rigidity in his body seemed to be working out. Um, he did seem more very mortal compared to yes his um, fights of yore, and like beating him back in his Herculean days, it was possible, but it took a minor miracle. Now it felt like more people than normal had a chance at him and he still overcame which sort of does circle back and almost call back to his rise to fame when he did have to dig deep yeah because there was a time when he was coming back from injury where he was a mortal man fighting in the lower ranks and you know not knowing if his knees would hold up and then once he hit yokozuna it was like no i'm the best something about yokozuna has fueled him in a way that is impossible to understand. Yes. And so well, going into this, we're like, is he going to fight? Is he not going to fight? Is he going to show up and just do another three in Kujo? Like we didn't know, but we got probably the best sumo he can physically give us. And we got our, you know, day 15 match with Kirishima. The opportunity was given. <sighs> and honestly, what, what I come to at the end of this is, Nobody is close to Yokozuna material yet. It's, well, nobody's close to Terano Fuji. True. No, but see, he set a bar, right? So Hakuho beat Terano Fuji. So if you can't beat Terano Fuji, you couldn't beat Hakuho. So we're just in a place right now where the strong, the upper body, physically strong men are not who we have anymore. So it's going to be a different type of Yokozuna when that finally comes. Mm, I'd, I'd agree with that. It's certainly, well... 
seeing Kirishima disappear into the stands after getting thrown out. I was, gasped. I was shocked. I like I looked over, bug eyed, saw him like crawling to his feet, and like he just got demolished with like one arm too. I was it would it shook me, but yeah. this is this is Terano Fuji coming back and saying, "Don't forget." The only thing keeping me from doing this all the time is the fact that my body is smashed into a million pieces that I reassemble for you. And there, and there was a little bit of, you want to be Yokozuna, you little punk? Yeah. That that was there. He was very punchy and angry and beastly this tournament. He was, he was probably in a lot of pain. He was, I feel like he was scrapping it. And he was scrapping that it. Was, that was part of what made it so sort of awe-inspiring. <laughs> is that you knew he was fighting through it. There was a couple of matches, um, particularly versus Ryudin, I would say, where he was forced into a lean fight with Ryudin. And Which Ryudin, was weird. No, not to take anything away from Ryudin, but Ryudin does not have a snowball's chance in <laughs> heck of beating Terunofuji on a good day. No. And Terunofuji had to, had to slow it down. He had to find the angle. Um... There Same were, with Kim Bozani. He, he was a little too hard against Kim Bozani. A little bit. So when I had watched that one on the replay, it felt like Terunofuji, like he had him dead to right, but he just didn't have the angle he wanted. Like mm-hmm. Kim Bozani was, Kim Bozani was a was a fly in the spider's oh, web. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's just Terunofuji didn't have from when back in the day. Like he gets that, he just he stands up, delivers them out cleanly. He just he couldn't do that against Kim Bozani. In the way that he would have a year ago. Right. Well, you know, one of the things he did that was smart, and this is the smart Yokozuna. If you remember Hakuho at the end, he was struggling. He's throwing the forearms. He's doing the face slaps. Terano Fuji was like, I'm going to use the arm lock. And what a brilliant, brilliant strategy that is. Because the second he clamps down, you see the panic and the fear. Mm. It doesn't matter how strong you are, how tough you are. If your arms are in that position, they're going to break. So you've already lost the match. He has put fear into your heart. And then he stands you up and marches you out. So I think that helped him a lot when he could vice grip people yeah. like that. It, it worked also both against Ura, which is sort of a calm down, you little punk. <laughs> also, yeah. he did that against Gonoyama. Yeah, and he did that as part of a like a, a like a wrenching deflection, and he did it against Abby as well. Mm-hmm. So, and so it's the same arm lock, but he applies it in different ways to counter things that would have given him trouble otherwise. Abby yeah. gave him a run around though. Props to Abby. He did. He, he was Abby was pretty fired up this tournament. You he could was. tell. So yeah, I mean, Terno Fuji may be mortal, but you still can't beat him. <laughs> nope. <laughs> still go back to the drawing board. Basically everyone. Um, so the big question, he came during the U-Share interviews and afterwards, he made a big deal about how, uh, I think in his interview, he said something along the lines of, I'm going to start practicing for March tomorrow. Although I feel like a little bit of saying what he needs to say. Mm -hmm. Um, does he come back or is this it? When he come, when he wakes up tomorrow, he's going to be a giant, swelled mess yeah so he's running off the adrenaline of winning this whole thing in a playoff i'm still the man but tomorrow is a different day i don't see him coming back in march but i do see him possibly coming back for that 10th u show you think the 10th u show is gonna gonna drag one more out of him it depends on how bad the recovery is because i like I said, he is running on adrenaline. It's like somebody who was just in a car accident mm. running around the scene. When he goes to bed tonight and wakes up the next morning, he's going to be like, oh, this hurts. Oh, I never want to do this again. And it's going to be an uphill battle for him to train himself enough to put himself through that kind of pain again. Yeah, I would agree. I would not March. I'd be shocked if he was in March. If he's in March, he's either got the painkillers that Sudagisho had <laughs> <laughs> or um, some some miracle happened. Minor miracle. Yeah. Uh, but for us, for now, welcome back, Terno Fuji. We had you just totally written off. We sort of did. And we were, we're like not even talking about him. It, well, we're in a way, we're like, is he even going to show up? And if he shows up, is he going to stay? We didn't know. Um, I'm going to, again, I'm going to like remember this moment. I'm going to hold on to it. This may be 
the last time we get this kind of a performance out of anyone. Yeah. It'll be years before we see something dominant like this. Maybe Haku Oho, maybe Onosato at some point. Maybe Koto Nawaka? Maybe Koto Zakura. Yeah, Koto Zakura. <laughs> right. Gotta get used to it. I, uh, we, another we, change. We got we got ready for Kiribayama. We'll get ready for <sighs> Koto Nawaka as well. All right, um, fine. And that is probably a good transition, unfortunately, to Kirishima. Um, 11 and 4. And Kirishima. So before, <laughs> we'll be talking about how, and we've always have, about how Ozeki with their 8, 9, 10 wins are unfortunately in a bad spot and kirishima with yusho contention 11 and 4 is unfortunately two steps behind yep well you know kirishima when i looked at let's think about the time where we had kirishima wakataka kage and hoshiryu all fighting to be ozeki kirishima was the last guy i had pegged to be the top guy it's not because he isn't talented it's not because he isn't strong is that there's just something just, like you said, he's just a little behind. He's not quite, he's got the physicality and the mind of Kakadu, but he's just not quite there yet. So for Kirishima, um, on math, there was a possibility, the outside chance of an outside chance that Kirishima forces the playoff and then Kirishima wins the Yusho off the playoff. Which everybody was kind of like crossing their fingers like, maybe. Yeah, because and there would have also been a real interesting caveat of if he beats Terunofuji, but Koto Nawaka still wins, he beats a Yokozuna but doesn't get the Yusho. And so now you're in this weird twilight zone of does he get promoted? Doesn't he get promoted? A 12 and 3 is pretty good. Right, he beat the Yokozuna. He beat the Yokozuna, you're a step behind, but he did sort of make this easy for us by getting destroyed getting destroyed like the throw and it looked like he had a fairly solid game plan he went inside but Terano Fuji Terano Fuji just grabbed the arm and lifted him up and the truth of the matter is Kirishima cannot go head to head with him he's not strong enough not yet he needs to be like maneuvering around the belt and maybe like doing some leg stuff like he did to Hoshoryu it was a mistake to go head to head that was such a slick slick Ah. move this is part of the glory days. And yes. to do that kick on Hoshiru, not only to beat him on a high stakes match, but basically at his own game. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't write it, down the Kimurite, but it was that like the, the side. Maybe I did. Nope, I did not. It was it was, it was one like, we don't see very often. It was not one we don't see. I didn't do a lot of notes on Kirishima because I felt that the reason that he lost wasn't because of how he fought, but because the pressure got to him. Which... You know, this is the first time. Yes. You know, this is a big deal to be going for Yokozuna promotion. Um, there is a part of me that's a little like, yeah, see, not so easy. Not so easy. So I think we all had in the back of our minds, and we will have this in the back of our minds when Hoshiryu goes through this some time later this year, mm-hmm. that it's a whole new level, even on top of Ozeki, even on top of everything else that they've done. And they, both of them, optimistically three of them but we'll get to that in six months yeah we'll need to adapt to how that feels yeah it's such an increase in pressure in the ring but it's an increase in pressure outside of the ring too like it isn't just oh i gotta win a you show there's so much more to Mm -hmm. it and kirishima you know he he got a taste of it got a taste so kirishima um does a very good job of avoiding (laughs) katoban yeah so He'll be he'll be ready to go for next time, but him and Hoshiryu will need to start their Yokozuna bid from square one. Well, if Terno Fuji doesn't come back in March, it's a little bit easier. I think I think one of the other one of the one of the uh, I'll say one of the Ozeki. I'll be charitable and I'll throw a wider net for someone else. Um, will run away with it in March. Probably if Does, Terano Fuji doesn't show ter- up. If when Terano Fuji doesn't show. Yeah, true. true. Um, I'll be I'll be a little. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, big boy. <laughs> Start throwing people. All right. Anyway, Kirishima, better luck next time. I I still believe in him. I still believe he can do this. I just feel like he got shooken up a bit. Yeah, he's gonna have to go home and and do some thinking. 
So next up, Hoshiryu Ozeki won West, 10-4-1. and one. And man, this was the Kyojo heard round the world. It was, a, it was, it let all the air out of the room. So I was live streaming with our amazing 42 mm. opinion subscribers. And somebody just drops in the chat, Hoshiryu's Kyojo. I'm like, you are lying. <laughs> you are lying. I'm Breaking sitting here news. pumping up tomorrow and you come in here with this. And it just, it gutted me, especially after that amazing match that Kirishima and Hoshoryu had. It, oh, it, it was, was like, no, we're we're not going to get to see Hoshoryu and Terano Fuji. Yeah. We're not going to see a 4 playoff. What <sighs> what made it almost worse is how good Hoshoryu was fighting. With a busted knee. With knees. a busted knee. He had, so the loss, the loss against Konoyama, I feel that was all, that was hubris. Mm. Um. He says he's got because he holds grudges. He holds grudges, so I feel like that was just that was on him. But the one against Abi, that was the knee, mm-hmm. and so from there we're like, uh oh, uh oh. But then he pulls it back together and goes on a tear, and the like again, like the way he fought, it's that Hoshoryu brand, mm-hmm. dynamic throws, athleticism. He does a Okuri Nage, which is a rear throwdown of Wakamoto Haru. Wakamoto Haru burning hot has him on the on the ropes dead to rights he does a weird physics defying back step moves around him grabs the belt and chucks it i'm like how did you do that <laughs> against you know wakamoto haru is a technician himself yes and wakamoto haru had a really good tournament and i'm sure he was thankfully. like i'm having a better tournament yeah, as I, I put in one of the titles for one of the live streams, Hoshuri was in a mood this entire tournament. <laughs> <laughs> it was the classic, like he was coming in every day like I don't want no nonsense. I'm just going to win. And if I lose, let's, let's just we'll move on. Because tomorrow I'm going to come and beat somebody up. So he's go- so he's going in to day 13, a step behind and the underdog. And I think I'm pretty sure I messaged you. Don't take your eyes off him. Yeah. Because we're everybody. everybody's talking about the uh, the east side Rikishi. That west side Rikishi is going to run away with it mm-hmm. if everybody looks past him. Yep. And then... Then the stupid then, injuries. Then day 14 happens. And it almost ruined the tournament for me because like day 15 cleared everything away. It sure did. But there was a couple of days where you have Terano Fuji fighting double digit Maegashira. You've got Kotono Waka fighting guys who aren't in the Yusho race. And it was like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, I know that's how it had to turn out. But then when Hoshuri went down, I'm like, oh, what are we going to get as a final here? Like, is this just going to be a bust? And no, of course, it all got taken care of. Yeah. I wanted I wanted Kota Nawaka versus Asanayama for the last day. I did too. Uh, I to- really did too. So a seven seven Tobizaru, I'm like, ooh. Anybody's <laughs> ever going to pull some crazy garbage. <laughs> Tobizaru. Not the bad pick. I will admit that. I think that's why they did it. They're like, you know what? We have no idea what's gonna happen when he gets in the ring. Nobody does. No. Ever. He doesn't um, know. We can talk about the whole scheduling thing. There's one I disagree with, but the rest it is a weird math the way that everything works out so these last so these last three days kirishima hoshiryu kota nawaka this these three fights had to happen in this order of course yeah so they can't fight anybody else prior true um and if you look at ono sato and ono show at this point they were yusho contenders right so in a situation where ono sato or ono show run away with it they've the, t- the Yokozuna will not be able to get himself back in because he has other people to fight. Right. That is... Now, for Ono Sato specifically, Taro Fuji should have fought Daesho, but they gave him Ono Sato instead for the hype. Yeah, that, that was all a hype decision. The, the, the Ono Sato one specifically was the, was the crowd pop. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll admit that was a... That was a crazy thing to see Ono Sato do. And as an Ono Sato fan, I think a lot of people are an Ono Sato fans yes. now. <laughs> You want to go to him and be like, you take this feeling and you bring it with you. Right. Th- think of think of how, like, if you could go go and tell a Tommy Fuji, if you can go tell Gonoyama, here's the Yokozuna experience before it matters. Right. Where like, you can just are, test it. Just te- just feel the way this is. This is the lowest possible stakes for Ono Sato. Yeah. He's just come into the top division and he gets to fight a Yokozuna. Yeah. That is, if you're if you're looking big game plan and you're like, really really tinfoil hat blind optimism you're like this is actually really good yes but for the for the mood of the tournament it was really funky yeah and you know somebody brought up in the live stream also 
You've got a Tommy Fuji and Midori Fuji in the top Maegashira spots. He can't fight either of them. It worked both ways, too. A Tommy Fuji and Midori Fuji would have had a much worse time. This is true. If they had to fight a Yokozuna. This is where the individual sport of sumo becomes a team sport. A team sport. Yeah. So, like, they played almost like guards for their guy. Like, oh, let's let's take those top spots, and now our guy can just, you know. Yeah. So if you see, um, if you rewatch the live or if you watched it live, um, they had a camera pointed at the East Hallway during the playoff. All the Isegahama guys were lined up in a row. Oh, I didn't catch that. I'll have to catch that tomorrow when the live. Um, yeah, uh, it'll be. Yeah, the, the they vibe put the of, live video on NHK World yes. tomorrow. Yes, they do. So I would j- just that one little clip because it it is it's all of them. Also, the. Uh, Takeru Fuji, who yeah, won, who won the, yep. he was there, and Tommy Fuji was there, and Midori Fuji was there. They were all just in That's line cool. watching. Cause there's that line you can't cross because then yep. you're backstage. They're just all on that line watching them. <laughs> wow, it's it's they're fun. gonna have a wild yeah. party tonight, man. So, oh, I'm pretty sure it's still going on. <laughs> yeah. Last point for Hoshiryu on that day 14. Here's the question for the ages. Is Terano Fuji having a day off the day before the playoff make or break it? I think that is huge. Think about him having to fight Hoshuryu. It would have taken a lot out of him. Taken a lot out Especially of him. if Hoshuryu tried some of his little leg kick stuff. <laughs> so all the stars aligned in Terano Fuji's favor. I don't know if he would have won it if all those things didn't go right for him. It would have been a much more desperate day 15, I think, for him. But... Uh, the good news for Hoshoryu is hopefully the knee thing is just a, what I think it was a strain, not a break, just a, a bad, bad luck. So he comes back healthy and is going to go on a tear. Yeah. Angry. Yeah. Wanting and it, revenge. And in a way, this is sort of nice because it means that Turner Fuji gets his last clean day in the sun. Right. Because we don't know what it's going to look like when a lot of these things yeah. are different. Yeah. Like, fast forward five years from now. Fast forward one year from now. Hoshiryu and Kirishima are still there, and they're going to be even fiercer than ever. And they're going to be like the great rivals of our time. Gr- and Taro Fuji will not. So right. You know. So in a sort of in a nostalgic way. Again, thinking back to that that Cinderella rise that he had, I'm like, it's good. To, it's good to see the big man doing his big man thing. Yes, I agree. All right. So well, we're gonna. This will be real quick. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, because it's me and it's Taka Keisho. Uh, so. 2-2-11 two, two, and 11 for Takakesho, and another what-if. But if we wanted to do what-ifs, that would, we would add an hour to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, if Takakesho was in this tournament, everything is different. Everything is different. Now, of course, he had to be not hurt. You know, yeah. but if he's in and he takes just a win off of one of these guys, flip the whole thing around. Or even just them having to fight him takes away a little bit of a their stamina. More. So, it's chronic neck injuries. It sounds like he's more injured than he's not these days. And I think he's going to fall into a similar pattern that Terno Fuji is that he's going to have to pick when he can come back. Which is worse if you're an Ozeki because you only get one little cushion. You don't get to take yeah. as much time off as you want. So he's going to come in Kadoban again. And it's not like he's going to be uninjured. He's still going to be injured. The uh, neck c- condition that he has <clears throat> is a progressive condition. So to start off, it can be just like the equivalent of like a very bad strain, but over time, continuously hitting the neck, it gets worse and worse and worse until you get to a point where you need surgery, but even surgery is not going to fix it. It's just going to give you some relief. So we know Takakesho has had this injury for years now. So there was a point where it was no big deal. He's way past the point where it's no big deal. And now he's going to be caught upon and do this whole song and dance again. Doesn't have elder stock yet. So he has to fight. So, you know, we've been talking about Terano Fuji retiring, but we have to talk about Takakesho retiring sooner than we had all planned as well. We don't know when that's going to be. But um, the good thing is he did come in, fight a couple matches. He left. He left on top. He did not have a losing record when he left. Um, he got a matchup against Atami Fuji. Beat him fair and square. Yeah, beat him clean. It'd be nice if that righted everything in the universe because Takakesha was very hurt and he still head-butted Atami Fuji out 
I'm like, what are you doing, man? He, well, he knew he had to do that clean. He, he had- knew he had to, like, he, I almost think he stayed in for the sake of fighting a Tommy Fuji because of all the, like, he probably knew right away he wasn't in a good spot because he had a winning score when he left. So I'm guessing, you know, he was like, let's just do this. Funny little note that I'm going to bring up because it's Taki K show. I did not see it myself. I don't know if you did, but I was told that Wakataka Kage hankered for his title. I, I, I also heard that. Um, um, I. It's just an interesting note to if Wakataka Kage did in fact hank a third division guy. Interesting note. But I digress. Um, I think Takakesha will be kind of forgotten now. Like He's, all the all the all the hype, all the anger towards him. There's no Yokozuna promotion. He's just going to be Kataban, and he could even go back to Ozeki Wake, and then from there, if he loses that, I think he's done. Well, I think I think everyone knows, including him, that November was the last chance. Yeah, and it's gone now. So what what we'll see at a Takake show now is we'll do what we can with what we've got. Change up the Tachi eye. He's going to make whatever adjustments. He's going to have to do whatever sumo he can. And he's just going to hold out for as long as his body lets him. Right. Or, you know, until he secures elder stock. Because he's not going to go any higher at this point. So if he secures elder stock tomorrow, I think he fights on until it's like, okay, I don't think I can do Ozeki anymore. And that would be it. Yeah. I, if, if he didn't care about... Elder Stock, I think he goes the way of Goedo. Yeah. That as soon as he's no longer Ozeki, he's gone. Right. I think if we see him fighting at Ozeki Wake or even Sanyaku, it's because he's still still scrapping for it. Right. Right. If if we see that, he doesn't have his Elder Stock. And if he drops out of Sanyaku, I don't think he'd continue. I think he'd use his three-year grace period and just probably try yeah. very hard it would be it would be bizarre to see the letter m next to takakesho's name on the rank i don't think i could handle it it would be it would be it would be rough it would be like seeing takiyasu when he fell down be like man you look weird down there that was very hard watching that with takiyasu for sure but we've gotten sort of adjusted to it at this point yeah well he's he also has adjusted expectations so true true uh so anyway uh i hope takakesho fixes up um, if he's not fighting fit, I hope he's not paralyzed. Yeah. So, you know, let's, let's keep our expectations shorter for him. <laughs> yeah. We're just not going to say anything. We'll just yeah. see what happens when the tournament starts. Yep. So next up, we'll go over to Sekiwaki one East, Koto no Waka, 13 and two. Soon to be Koto Zakara. The, yeah, I think during the, yeah, during the stream, they made mention they're like, oh, we're going to have that meeting. This is you show equivalent. This is 33 wins. It's about as clear cut as you get fought the yokozuna i think he i think he gave terno fuji a lot like if you think about that match it actually looked like two usually terno fuji looks like he's just so much bigger than the other guy koto nawaka looked like he belonged in the match with him at least for a little bit yeah Um, i mean obviously he's he's just not good enough the hold at the edge was somewhat impressive yes for for koto nawaka he's he's got a health and age on his side for sure yeah he this was I think Terno Fuji was channeling a little bit of his Tochi notion, yeah, honestly, <laughs> in that playoff fight. He's like, I'm throwing out all the stops. You know, this thing can, br- my knees can break in mid fight and it's not going to stop me. Like that was his I attitude. want this, you show. He wanted it. You can tell it was hungry. Here was, here was the guy who thought he was hot and Terno Fuji's like, no. Nah. Um, but, but that 13 and two is not to be scoffed at. No, he looked very dominant. Way more dominant, actually, than Kirishima did in the last tournament. But I would say he probably had an easier schedule. Am I right in that? Yeah. Well, he fights Kirishima. He fights Daesho. He does not fight He does not fight uh, Hoshiro, but that was because that was the day 15 fight. Right. Um, fights Abi, fights Ura, fights Itami Fuji, fights Midori Fuji. He has to yeah, fight all the yeah, Fuji. Yeah, he fought everybody. So he fought everybody except for Hoshoryu, but he was going to. That wasn't this. It wasn't like they let him off Scott. And free. he did fight Takayasu, or did he get the that was the freebie? Okay. I would. 
when it comes to freebies, we're going to get into this a little bit later. There's some people that put asterisks next to freebies. I'm like, if they had that fight, who would win? Yeah. We know who we're talking about right now. Okay. <laughs> not not to say not to say that Takayasu can't beat Kota Nawaka on a good day, but Takayasu is not having a good day. No. So Kota he, Nawaka wins this whether or not Takayasu's Takayasu is there, there or not. Um, this is this is my opinion on Fusencho's. Um, it's, it's a good way to look at it. The big thing for Koto Zakura and something to keep an eye on is he's getting patient beforehand. He was he was urgent. There was a there was a little impatient, a little bit of scrambly, a little scrambly, a little desperation. He's calming down. Also, he's relying on his defense and his technique. There were so many times that somebody really really hard would hit him, like Daisho or Ryu, and somebody physically powerful, and they would stop. Like they like they hit a wall. Yeah. And from there, then Colton Awaka is controlling them. Right. And then he builds his own sumo from there. He makes them play his game. Right. And it's like a, you know, mouse caught in a trap. Yes. Um, so he was fighting Daesho. Daesho did better than a, you'd think with a nine and six, but that's a nine and six earned. He has Colton Awaka moving back. Colton Awaka does a pull, not to pull but to control Daesho's movement and that gets him inside and then he re-engages. He is dictating the terms of the fight going forward or going back and that is why he's Ozeki. Yeah, and let's hope that he can keep that momentum going because we hadn't really seen that until this tournament, but we knew he was trying to make a statement. So if he sort of channels everything he did and just keeps fighting this way, he's going to be Yokozuna before you know it. The, yeah, the entirety of March for him is welcome to Shinozeki. Which we all know how bad it goes <laughs> for most people. It'll be a spectacle. It'll be a spectacle. If he does really well and, you know, could you imagine if he wins the U show or something? That would be an exclamation oh, point. That would be really... Oh, sure, you got a desperate eight and seven. Yeah. And we were like, that's good for you because we didn't think you'd get this far. Yeah, that's could, the bar. Could you imagine you get Ozeki promotion and then immediately go on a Yokozuna run? That <sighs> okay, I'm I'm getting yeah. hyped. That, this is this is the energy to bring in the March guys. Yes, when when February hits you and it's cold and garbage, think about Koto Zakura Yusho back to well, sort of back to back. Yeah, or Yusho equivalent back to back. That'll mm, mm, mm. yeah, even with that. Just saying, no. they might be able to get their Yokozuna. We, a lot of people are talking about, oh, maybe we can just give it to Kirishima anyway, <laughs> I know, because right? of the desperation. So, what if somebody with a with a little bit more of a proper score shows up, which could still be Kirishima, by the way. Yeah, yes, a lot loose focus, but man, this is this is the Kota Nawaka that is earning the name. And at least we got a promotion, so yes. we didn't get our Kirishima promotion, but we got an Ozeki promotion, and. He's been working on this for a while. Well earned. Well yeah. deserved. I don't think anybody's going to look at him and be like, well, you know, they're going to look at him and be like, yup. Yeah. There good was, luck. You cannot put an asterisk next to his Mm-mm. name. No, you can't. So the other Sekiwake, there's a few people that got completely lost in the shuffle, but still had good sumo. Yeah. Daisho still had good sumo. Daisho is stuck in the Sekiwake hole. Yeah. Because the, the nine and six beating Asanayama on the last day, that was big. That is, that, this is the, the the exact kind of thing. Like he's doing really well, but with everything else happening, you're gonna miss it. Right, you're just not paying any attention to that. Yeah, so he's solid sumo, and again, he's improving that. I can't do push sumo, but I'm still going to win stuff. Mm-hmm. That. Takakeso handles it with raw physicality and like a tactical mind. Daesho is handling it with different strategies. Um, he uh, does a, by the way, another person to beat Wakamoto Haru, Daesho, on the belt. Yeah, that was that was surprising. I was like, oh, Daesho, yeah. what, yeah. what are the, you doing? There is, a, there is a trend with some of these pusher thrusters, the, the, the surprise belt rush. That they use their forward motion from the pushing and thrusting to like grab on to grab the belt and then they run. They run like they're they shoplifting. Yeah. <laughs> and Daisho did that to Wakamoto Haru. And it's just like if he like if he did that to to someone else, uh, he did, he did it to maybe not a Tommy Fuji, but you know, let's just girl down. Gonna, who, who am I gonna pick on? If he did that to Abi, you're like, okay, Abi Abi might have been pulling anyway, but he did it to somebody who 
if you grab that belt and you're not ready for it, you're in trouble. Right, exactly. Daesho took the risk. Daesho was like, I can win if I grab this belt and run. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny to think about, actually. It's, it's fa- I, I was like, what? It's like it's like stealing, like shoplifting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And again, because this was day five. Yeah. Out of everyone's collective unconscious. Right. I'd by, run- by day 15, you don't remember day five. I... F- I- this is why I have to write all this stuff down. Except for <laughs> if you're watching like Toby Zaru fight Terra Fuji. When we get to Toby Zaru, we have to talk <laughs> about that oh match. Yes, we are. I, I almost talked about it with Terra Fuji, but Terra Fuji has a lot going on. So right. So we're like, we'll save it for Toby Zaru we'll, and we'll, all we'll, of we'll, the list of things we could say about Toby <sighs> Zaru. Oh boy. So something else and all props to Ryudin on this one. Ryudin had Daisho moving back. He was smothering Daisho. But Daesho, instead of using the pushes to go forward, was using it to control distance. He was surviving until Ryudin tired himself out. <laughs> right. And then he did a then he did a, a side and a turn down. So Daesho is evolving, is going forward, but Sekiwake is tough. Well, yeah, because to get to Ozeki is a monumental task. And he's missed out on it a couple of times. So like it gets harder and harder yes. to restart and get yourself fired up. He's probably stuck in Sekiwake for a while. For a while. Well, with the nine and six, he needs two, like in May, maybe he can get something going. And that's right. if March is good. So this is this is the hole you're in. Right. You either like get stuck there until you get knocked out or you're just stuck. You're just stuck. And this is this is what happened to Takanosho. This is what happened to Meisei. This is what is happening, current tense, to Wakamoto Haru. Right. Future tends to be determined, Wakamoto Haru. It tends to actually go the way of you f- dropping out and never dropping getting back. Out. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. that's not the future for Daesho. A, a, uh, a less serious note, um, the inception of flying Daesho. <laughs> we had, I think I felt like I've seen this out of him before, but it happened It happened twice. One, when Hokuto Fuji, God bless, pushed him upwards and he goes, wee, he yeah. goes flying a little bit. And then he fights Hoshoryu, and he hops twice. And it's like, what is going on? <laughs> he gets a little bouncy. I don't know. I don't know what that's about, but I laughed. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, have no idea either. It's like so keep keep your keep your eye out for the mysterious flying Dae show. <laughs> He's like on a pogo stick. It is. That's what it was. <laughs> He's bouncy. Even I think it was Murray Johnson that day. He's like, what is Dae show <laughs> doing? And he was so serious. You know, Murray would give him a straight too. Yeah, Murray's like. Okay, Daisho, what's up? <laughs> so the nine and six does like I, again the la- the day fifteen against Asanayama is a huge win for him. Not only does that say I still got it on the last day against somebody who is beating everyone else, but that uh, that nine and six you can sort of do something with later. If that was an eight and seven, it's a hold at the very least. It's a hold. The eight and if he got an eight and seven, like I almost thought he was going to. You do not. You cannot do anything with an eight and seven. No, nope, it's like start room. over. It's done. So with the nine and six, it's the maybe I can borrow this later. Yes, a little bit of hope. And you know we were looking a little rough in the Sanyaku because we were kind of feeling Kotonowaka was going to get promoted, and a lot of the Maegashira ones are, you know, <laughs> it's it's falling apart for us. So it's like we can't have anybody left yeah. to be in Sanyaku. We're, so we'll Daisho needed to keep a spot. Yeah. Well, that. He was he was he was here. Um, he was seven and five. So then he was seven and six here. So if he had lost out, he would have been seven and eight, which, which would have given him. They would have given him Kamasubi for that. Yeah. So about yeah, when he beat Ryudin right here, this was a, this was a little shaky right here. But keep in mind, Kota Nawaka, Oshoryu, Kirishima, fighting the people who didn't lose to anybody. And he will get a promotion because he'll get to go to the east yes, side. Yes, by well, by default. By also, default, yeah. Also by the 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 absolute wasteland that is the top five. Well, we, <sighs> this is going to be an interesting guess the Banzuke for people again. But well done, Dae Show. Still working on it. Still stuck. Some concerns, but for now, he did enough. Yes. So Takayasu. <laughs> <sighs> Speaking of the uh, sundered. Kamasubi two four and nine so normal he saw that a bunch of other people were going Kyujo and he's like no 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 I'm not gonna get outdone so he goes Kyujo twice <laughs> I know giving us a slight bit of hope that he'd be back and it's like no no this isn't working you he gets, know 
He gets back pain that dumps him out beforehand. And we're like, okay, sure. And then he comes back with from whatever. And then he gets the flu. Yeah, he gets sick a lot. He gets sick. So, he like, is, compared to all the other guys, he's had the most illness withdrawals that I've seen. Yeah. So, when he, like, the, the wins that he did get when he was held together well enough, it was, it was a pretty Takayasu win. Signature power, dominant speed. I'm, so I'm looking at this. He's finally clawed his way back to Sanyaku. We're like, okay, maybe he can finally do the Ozeki run. And then this happens. I'm like, okay. I just don't know if I can give any more. Hear, hear me out on this one. Okay. My last glimmer of hope as a, as a Takayasu fan, as we're all Takayasu fans here. I feel like, okay. Ozeki Takayasu, you need three. You need three really strong records. You need to be in Sanyaku. So basically, like, he needs to have his stuff held together for 10 months probably not possible you only need one good tournament for a you show true so hold, that so hold we, on to that <laughs> that that has been my thought about takiyasu is he's more likely to win a you show yes. than to ever get back to ozeki but he's i don't know yeah. i'm it, starting to lose a little bit of hope here it'll be that tamawashi you show the underdog story. He'll be two matches behind. Sanyaku falls apart. He's like Megashira four-ish. And then he gets it on the last day. Like it's one of it's it's a thing that like he needs to win and then someone else needs to lose. So like all the pressure's not on him. Mm-hmm. You know, and then somebody chokes it and he wins sitting by the side of the ring. That is the only way he's gonna win. This is how he wins. Yes. This is and so this is what us Takayasu fans can get to hold on to. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to hold on to something yeah, because I feel, yeah. when he dropped out that second time, I was like, oh, I am not picking him for you show again. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I feel like we can't at this we point. We can't. I think we retire Takayasu from you show picking. We can't. You guys can. Yeah. But you can. The, yeah. The, the two of us, we've got we, we to gotta, we on gotta, the shelf. We're going to need to make a list of retirees. These are the people we won't pick anymore. Can't pick them. And then maybe they'll do it because we don't pick them anymore. Exactly. It's, so. it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the double reverse fake. But anyway, Takiyashi, I hope he's I hope he gets better. The flu can suck. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, even if you're some healthy demigod walking the earth, the flu will, the flu will knock you down for weeks. Oh, so hope he gets better. Compound that with the back issues. <sighs> Like, the like, back was probably hurting because he had the flu. Bit of both. Because the yeah. flu will make everything tighten up. So yeah. that was like his hint that he had the flu probably. Like, I'm, I was thinking about this. Like sometimes like when you get the flu and you're just like, all I can do is lie down in bed. Like imagine that, but you can't lie correctly because your back hurts. Oh, that <laughs> that poor man. <laughs> I feel for you, Takiyasu. I'm not Hang putting you there. on the list because I don't like you. I'm putting you on the list because my Hang heart can't so, take yes. it. So I'm, I for one, I'm saying let's not, let's not. Let's not destroy our hearts and our hopes with Ozeki Takayasu, but just worry about that one thing. Yes. Focus so. on the U show. It's my, that's my uh, 42 cents. Okay. I'll take so it. So next up, um, bad but also good, Ura, Kamasubi 1 West, 6 and 9, but let's, let's make a, let's, a show of hand. Who cares? <laughs> no one. No hands raised in Did this Did anybody look at Ura's record and say, oh, he stinks? No, everybody's like, ooh, I'm going to watch an Ura match today. Yeah. So, to be fair, he got absolute murderer's row. Taro no Fuji, Hoshoryu, <laughs> Kota no Waka, the one-time Takayashu shows up, <laughs> Dai Eisho, Wakamoto Haru. So, this whole group right here, Yeah. I'll give, I'll give, I'll give Hokuto Fuji this one. But Thankfully, but, he like, didn't have to fight Takayashu. So these are basically he is given a seven loss handicap. Yes. Because all these people are game, all these people are fighting, and he gets a little bad luck. So if you look at it from that perspective, a six to nine is actually pretty good because yeah. he wins out deck here. And it's like doesn't just win against freebies. Here's Gonoyama. Here's a Tommy Fuji. Yeah. Mister, so, you know, challenge for the U show. So this is a. Uh, this is a this is a very very good six and nine because like I was like oh man he's gonna get double digit losses it's gonna be real rough and he just pulls it back up because he never gives up he never gets pessimistic he just does his thing because he appreciates that he's even made it this far he he also uh he put the uh 
He put the pedals on Kota Nawaka. They were chasing each other around. That was fun. Great chaos. <laughs> all, the, all the people who did chaos, who do chaos, did chaos. Yes. And, it of was, course, his match with Toby Zaro is the usual classic that it is. The usual beautiful thing. Um, final day note, addendum. I was right. Um, this is called a Sutezori, the underarm forward body drop. Now we've seen him try this a couple of times and get absolutely shut down. Like yes. when he, like it's the desperation, tuck his hand under the armpit and lean back. Yep. But against Ryudin, who's pressuring him and Ura's like, I'm, I'm in a desperate spot. I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> and he does it and people lose their minds. I can't remember who was the English commentator. Uh, on day 15, it was Raja. Okay, so Raja was like, that is an extremely dangerous Oh, yeah, move. he's like, this is not a good idea. <laughs> I cannot think of a more Earl way to end. <laughs> he's like, Makakoshi, going to lose it, goes for the crazy, risky, fun throw. Right, he doesn't care what the score is, and that's why every match is entertaining. And if you listen to the crowd... He gets the loudest pops. Oh, his yeah. his pops are louder than Terado Fuji's, okay? He they're watching him do this with Rudin, and that crowd just flew out of their seats, screaming, yelling. I was expecting the, the Zabaton to go fly. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> Somebody should do that with an Ura match sometime. That'd be hilarious. They just love him, and I understand. Because that man is entertaining no matter what the score is. Yeah. So more positive news. He avoided double digits on the curse, which yep. is always a good sign. Scrapes a lot of that on week two. And if he comes back to Sanyaku again, it's a little less curse. Yeah. And, you know, he could have won against Midori Fuji or Abi, And that changes the whole... A little bit. Yeah. You know, it changes the whole scheme of things. It wasn't that he was completely outmatched by everybody. Just the top guys who performed like the top guys. Yeah. And it... it we are getting to that knife's edge with him a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to be too optimistic on this because, yeah, like we said, Ur is here for fun. Let's not right. push too much pressure on him. But yeah, imagine that Takiyasu, Takiyasu doesn't come back. That's one more fight. That's one more win. One more win. He, yeah. you know, takes one off of Abi or Midori Fuji. Any little thing, and this is a different record. And the truth of the matter is, if they can do it. They're not going to drop him too low because they probably absolutely love yeah. him fighting yeah. the top guys, even if he loses. Well, we're going to, we might as well talk about it now, well, now that we're transitioning off. Bless Ura and his pink belt at all times. <laughs> uh, but we are going to have three empty Sanyaku slots. So for the longest time, we had seven, we had eight. We we're like, we got to give it all these people. Now we've had a, now we've had a clearance sale on Sanyaku. We've got one <laughs> yeah. going into it. So we've got to figure out who's coming. Well, Wakamoto Haru is coming, right? He sure is. We're like, is Atami Fuji coming? No. Is Midori Fuji coming? No. Abi. Is Abi coming? An eight and seven, but he's next up. Konoyama, <laughs> Okta Fuji, Toby Zaru, yeah. Shodai, <laughs> Ryu. So we go all the way down to make sure you're a five with an eight and seven. Yeah. And, or we go even further to a nine and five. Which means that Ura won't drop that far, I would no. think, because everybody else just did so poorly. And saving himself from double digit losses is going to be a bit everything. of a cushion. Yes. So Ura is going to definitely be 1 2 3. And I think I think a one actually well who do you put? Who do yeah. you put? Right. <laughs> They're all down. They're all bleeding out because the people up top are fighting like the people up top again. Right. Everybody's just a little confused like, "Oh yeah, this is the way things are supposed to supposed go." Supposed to be. It's almost new and fresh even though it's tradition. Yeah. It's a new concept. <laughs> But in any case, so it'll be very interesting to see how the Bonzu case shapes out. Yes. Uh, but well done to Ura for, if not the record, the fandom. <laughs> yeah. Without you, Sumo is just not the same. So Wakamoto Haru, now down to, he's going to he's gonna be Sekiwake, just cozy right back up. Yep. At 10 and 5. They're going to put him right back where he fell as if nothing happened. And, and we can he, forget that that happened. The way he was fighting, it's as if he was already Sanyaku. Well, this, that, the way he carried himself, the way he fought. Also, Terano Fuji and, and Kota Nawaka have one thing in common, a few things in common. They both lost to Wakamoto Haru. Yeah, because Wakamoto <clears throat> Haru is that good. I mean, I had this feeling about him for a long time that like he was Yokozuna material. 
But things haven't quite worked out for him. And it was brought up on the live streams that he was actually fighting an illness. Hmm. Which is very different than an injury. And that could explain why he kind of wasn't himself. I mean, if you're battling, you know, coming back from a respiratory thing, then you just can't output the way that you normally would. So presumably now he's just back to being healthy and we just go back to normal with him. Yeah. I like for me, like Taro Fuji win, Takakesha win when he was here, Kota Nowaka win, you know. The, these three right here. I mean, he gets the outstanding performance award for those three, and then and then so he was also he was going into the last day nine and six. So like, you got the outstanding performance award. Good good job. You don't need to fight again. He's like, I'm still gonna win. Wants to put a cherry on top of that. Cherry Sunday. on top. That that's the that's the hunger mindset. That's the I want this. Well, you can't help but think with his brother challenging for a you know you show title down lower. That he wasn't a little extra fired up. A little extra. You just don't want to don't want to get too sh- ouch, Joan. But you know, you got to think about it. Like he's got to position himself before his brother comes back. A little bit. There's a little bit of that. A friendly of rivalry going on there, perhaps. So, very very well done. So he does have, and we noticed this during his Ozaki runs. There's a couple of lapses. Mm-hmm. Again, the Daisho catches him out. Koto Shoho props to him outpaces Wakamoto Haro with the body lock. So like the, he's not it's not like get the get the Ozeki run ready, but this is a for for the longest time we were looking for people who were like they belong in Sanyaku. Right. Like he obviously, you know, he gets dropped down to Maigashira one and he just cleans house, which shows you he doesn't belong he in does Maigashira. Not belong he there. belongs in Sanyaku. So he's a consistent fellow in that respect. And that's what we need to see. We need consistent Sanyaku that, you know, Hold the place until other guys are able to come up, and then hopefully you get yeah. promoted. And yes, that's the thing for the way he was fighting here. One lends one to believe that the next time he leaves Sanyaku will be in the other direction. That would be the hope. It'd be nice, but yeah. it's that is that is twenty twenty four. Yeah, goals it, it'll be very interesting in November of this year. What we're talking what about? Yeah, it's a lot of years still to go. Yes. So next, we're going to talk about Atami Fuji. Six and nine, sad faces all around. Not unexpected, though. Yeah. So, as I was mentioning before, this would have been a five and ten if he had to fight a Yokozuna. Mm-hmm. So keep that in mind for him and for Midori Fuji. Yeah. That even though, like, even though it was bad now, they they some of their wins were them helping each other, and they're sort of padding their records a little bit. It's just these little things that was helping. It's like you had said before, it becomes a team sport. When you get to like the larger strategy of schedules and a bunch of people fighting each other. Right. What a wonderful thing that the only Yokozuna is in his stable. So he never has to fight a Yokozuna at this point in his life. No. Until the next one shows up. Right. Whenever that may be. Yeah. So he's for for positive for positive spin. Something to keep in mind about the people he's beating. Toby Zaru, Daie Sho, Abi, Gonoyama, and Shodai. All current or former Sanyaku. So he's beating the right people if he needs to get higher. Right. Uh, His losses are against those who are higher than him. Higher than him. Now, I'm being a bit charitable to Gonoyama, but I think we all know where this is going to go. Yeah. But, and by the way, taking the other up-and-coming hotshot and putting him down... That's another statement. Right. That's another statement. So, and then you look, Kota Nawaka, everyone loses. Kirishima, everyone loses. Hoshoryu, same and deal. So a lot of these losses are against people who just simply weren't going to go down. The last day here against Shonan Umi, that's a Shonan Umi thing. I'm not taking anything away from Atami Fuji on that. Well, Shonan Umi suddenly like woke up at the very, very end of the tournament was like, wait, I don't like what's happening yeah. here. So, yeah. So keep this in mind. Particularly because, and you had mentioned this with Ura as well, like one or two changes on some really close matches, and this changes everything. So when he fought, when he fought Tamawashi, it was that crazy like running around thing, and then it ends with both of them throwing each other simultaneously, and it's only because Tamawashi engaged it a quarter of a second beforehand that Tamawashi wins. Right. If a Tommy Fuji was just like a little faster, he wins that. Right, and then, then it's a seven and eight. Then he's fighting Ura. Ura's got him running around. Tommy Fuji plants his foot to block and pivot. He steps out before he pivots. If he had stepped inside, Ura's dead. 
Right. That's some of those rookie mistakes. Like, he's only been here, what? Yes. Two tournaments? Three tournaments? This is his career high. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot to be positive about with the Tommy Fuji. I mean, when you go up that high, you're going to get thrashed. You're going to get thrashed. The first time that you do it. So, yeah. The the, the context is, and we, we will say this to death, like the... The score doesn't tell the whole story. No. So this is a this is a fighting man six and nine. This is a guy who's got what he needs, but needs to put it together. Mm-hmm. And we have every reason to believe that he will. Except I will say he's awfully taped up. That's a bit of a concern. Like he's got it on the shoulder. He's got it on one shoulder, one arm, one leg. Hopefully that's just like support and not like he's headed for some big injury. That's Yes, we we shouldn't ignore that considering the theme of this tournament is injuries. <sighs> yes. So thankfully, this is one that the angel of injury passed by. Yes. <laughs> we'll say that. They but, had to pass somebody by. Yes. Thankfully, they, they had such mercy upon us. <laughs> yeah. It's like we don't need any more. Yeah. So down but not out. And enough talent and execution on display to say that Atami Fuji will come back in March Stronger than ever, barring all the things we just said about the angel of injury, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but that's always the case. Always. So we are just from one Fuji to the other. Here is Midori Fuji, five and ten. Um, master clinic of fast technician sumo against Kirishima and throws around Ura. He but Ura, Ura lost a lot of the a lot of the fight. Actually, no. This was this was a this was like a sweet parry match. Yes. He, so he out parries, out squats Ura. Very <laughs> good stuff. So he has these moments of real brilliance, and then gets thrown the hell around. Well, that's the problem. Is he's just so small, you know, like Enho was. That he's got to be perfect, he or else perfect. he's going to get utterly just like picked up by a pinky and flung across the room. Most of his losses were he got caught and blasted out. They, he never had a chance to get going. He got shut down. Right. Now, some of it wasn't. Some of it wasn't going to pick you up and throw you like a baby. That happened. Um, <laughs> it, but a lot of it was. They all knew what Midori Fuji had to do to win because he doesn't have options. So they close that lane, and then Midori Fuji is just gonna flail. And God bless him, a hundred percent every day. Oh, yeah. Never gives in. Never gives in. No off days. There's never... Even when he gets smoked. The next day he comes in and he's trying stuff. It's like, even when he gets smoked, he's like, he's still trying for it. He still goes in. Um, Takakesho Henker are just gonna... We're just gonna put that to the side. <laughs> that will be discussed later. Um, but that was... Uh, to Takakesho's defense, he saw it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Takakesho yeah. was like, yeah, I know it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> So I'd say keep trying Midori Fuji, except he doesn't need to hear me say that because he's already doing it. I mean, truth be told, the effort alone just makes you feel like he needed a better score. He just tried so hard. Yeah, the the 5 and 10, unfortunately, the final loss on the day, which was, again, the both of them, the people that they lost to on the final day, I would say it is more them bringing it. Kim Bozan rallied. He really did. Sh- Shonano Umi says no. Uh-huh. So... You know, that's that's not on them for losing. No. Sometimes your opponent is just better. Yeah. And the wasteland that's here, it's probably not, they're probably not going to dump him too far down either. Right. Th- these guys picked the right tournament to not have yeah. their best tournament. <laughs> they all agreed to be <laughs> bad together. Yeah. They're like, let's just, uh, let's all do this together. Let's have some injuries and <laughs> then we'll be okay. Get, get out of your system. So next up, Abby, eight and seven, super streaky. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm going to say this to everybody just to underscore how dominant people were. But loses the Kota Nawaka, loses the Terra Nofuji, loses the Kirishima, beats Hoshuryu, surprisingly enough, caught Hoshuryu on that leg. So a lot of these losses, everybody had this four-loss handicap, this right. five-loss handicap in some cases. So these people in the top five, they're, they're going into week two beat up, low morale, and they know they have to scrap it every day. If they just want to win, and that's what Abby did. Yeah, he did what he had to do. And what was interesting is, in the, part of his streakiness was he started off with Abby A. He was doing the waves, yes. potty. He was channeling, you know, honoring his stable master, and it just wasn't working. So then he's like, you know what? I'm gonna start doing crazy Abby B stuff, and 
still still struggled a bit. Still struggled a little he bit. He settled himself yeah, he, after he, all the chaos. Scrapped it out. So some interesting things. So we were talking about people were shutting down Midori Fuji so he couldn't get things started. Abi shuts him down by grabbing the belt and running with him. <laughs> another surprise, another surprise push sumo belt grab shoplift. That's going to be the new thing. <laughs> There's, you know, we t- once again, we talked about this in the live stream. It's like the morphogenetic field. Somebody wins with the technique, and the next thing you know, everybody's doing it. As a as a Zero Escape fan, I was so glad to see that show up in the comments. <laughs> Me too. I, I got a little bit too excited <laughs> about that. But, like, seriously, like, you see Daesho doing it. You see Abby doing it. Like, this is going to be a new thing. You you watch March. You're going to see that happen a couple times. Yeah. Um, another person who Ryudin does his smothering pressure and he digs deep and does a really good defensive hold. Ryudin, unfortunately, had a terrible time of it. and Everybody w- wanted to take out their stuff on him. <laughs> this is a guy who just got beaten down. We'll point you're just like, he doesn't deserve this. <laughs> so we talk about the 5 and 10 Midori Fuji, like you deserve better Ryudin, doubly so. But yeah, in got, any case. He got taken out. <laughs> um, he got his Kachikoshi, which I feel like that is, that's what we all wanted for him. Yep, in, that in, that was our bare minimum. A bare minimum, you know, gets to honor his st- stable master, and with an eight and seven in this kind of a disaster area, he gets to be Sanyaku. He gets again. to be Sanyaku, and as I said this before, beats Konoyama, beats Midori Fuji. Oh, the Ichi Yamamoto <laughs> fight. We're gonna talk about that in a bit. But so he's beating other people. He beats Wakamoto Haru. That was a big match. So and this was the this was the eighth win. Yeah. He gets the eighth win off of Wakamoto Haru. So, That's impressive. If you are if you want to get up top, you, these are the people you need to be. All these people in the shark tank together, they need to they need to be the top person or they're never getting out of that tank. Yep, exactly. So, Abi knows. That's the thing about Abi. He no. is a smart guy. He knows what he needs to do. I do think he has elbow issues. They're always taped up and you can kind of see him lose the extension at some points. So I think injuries are plaguing him a bit, but he's gritty and he knows what he needs to do when he yes. does it. Yeah, he knows. And that's the thing also is that like you look at him, Mr. Trickster, Abby B, Henkas, you're just like, he's just flailing around. It's just like, there's a brain under there. Yeah, he wants to create chaos so you don't know what kind of Abby you're going to get. That's good. He, he's uh, never predictable. I'm looking forward to March where you get to see an Abby who's sort of adjusted. Yeah. A little to, bit more time. A little more time. Get to process things and maybe growing yeah and you know i wouldn't wouldn't wish what happened to him on anyone but this is this is life yep. this is sumo sumo and life they yeah. coincide like together so gonoyama make sure three east five and ten um i would say dangerous but now he's high enough up that people know what he's about and yeah hoshiru is probably the only person on that list that didn't respect him and he paid the price <laughs> uh-huh Everyone else knew Gonoyama was strong. He was aggressive. Belt and push sumo, strong sumo mind are like, we need to pay attention. This is big era. Yeah. This is a very interesting point that you're making is it did seem like anybody who went into the ring with him totally expected like a fight. They knew. They knew. He's a new guy and yet they're all looking at him like, uh, Gonoyama. Like you said, yeah. except for Hoshuryu. Yeah, because no, no. he's out of his mind. And he gets March, March that fight. I can't. Oh, I know. <sighs> this. And, and you know, just as a brief aside, I love Gonoyama, but I think Hoshiryu kind of slipped past him into my second spot. So they're going to have to yeah. fight it out in March. <laughs> if Gonoyama gets the best of him in a way that shows his sumo spirit, then then I'll let Gonoyama be in the second spot yeah. again. Have a little contest going on. You know what it is? I am a sucker for like the passion. Like, oh, if the- you care so much that you're on the ground, pounding oh, the ground. That hurt. Like, I felt, I really did feel like my soul leave my body when Hoshiru lost to Kirishima because I could feel how much he wanted it. Oh, like, he hit, like, because at that moment he knew he was out of the Yusho race. He had it. It slipped through his fingers. He also probably felt the knee. Felt the knee. He's like, and then he's just like, yeah. And then when you hear about um, the injury reports, it's just like day 14, he's out. And then he goes and he's just like, you're just like just shoot me up with whatever I need to get into day 15 and stable master pulled him aside and just like you're gonna fight like crap don't yeah. do this to yourself yeah you're already done yeah just let it just <laughs> let it go to, they had to talk him off the cliff of like showing up to sumo with crutches yeah. 
That's how sure are you. And that's the thing. Like, how can I not be like, okay. See, Takakesho can't get knocked off. He's he's permanently he's, cemented he's, as my favorite. Yeah. But Hoshoryu has shown me the spirit that I would like to see from Gonoyama. I actually think we all know that Gonoyama is pretty talented. He's got a lot of tricks in his arsenal, but he's green, and we saw it in this tournament. He's got If he gets a little bit more of that fire, like, I got to win, then you're going to see another side to him. Yeah. Well, this is this is the... So we'd say it's like you, you, you touch the top five, you fall back down, you grind your way back up. Then you touch Sanyaku and you fall down. You grind your way back up. This is the Builds experience. character. Same thing for a Tommy Fuji and that you got to go through this process of facing the adversity of realizing that your best ain't the best. Yeah. And that you need so much more to yeah. be the guy. Yeah. So again, the takeaway for Gonoyama is the fact that everybody looked at him and says, he's dangerous. We can't, you can't go on to him like you could go on to other people. Right. Like, don't mess around with this kid yeah. because it's yeah. going to be a problem. It was so reminiscent of... I had to go back and watch old Takakesho matches because my heart was so broken. And Gonoyama is reminiscent of that time when Takakesho was coming up. And while the Yokozunas were constantly just flicking him around, there was still this constant, like, on edge. Like, this kid could do something. Don't don't, don't disrespect. Take don't him. take your eyes off him. Gonoyama yeah. has that quality to he him. Is. And he is... He will be coming from this needs to get hungry again perspective. And yeah. The, again, so I was saying before that the key to getting over this is to beat the other people around you. And for him, a Tommy Fuji mm-hmm. and Abi and Asana Yama and Daisho. Takano Show. Takano Show. So he's the guy on the short end of the stick here. And so Gonoyama is saying, I'm fast. I'm strong. I have the talent. I have the will. But it's not all fitting together. It's like maybe on each given day, only one of those attributes shows up. So this is this is where I we haven't seen Goniyama for, for long, but I feel like we got like a real good read on him. Like he's gonna look at this and be like, "Oh, that means I get to be meaner then." Yeah, <laughs> and he's got that in him yeah. for sure. Like Hoshiri will make sure to bring it out. Yeah, so he's gonna you know he's gonna dig deeper and he's gonna get even stronger. Yep. and he's gonna get more attitude. So keep this in mind. We will never get the future Gonoyama without this five and ten. This is true. You really need the hardship to, you know, yes. get that get those edges. Yeah, and then maybe he comes for that number two spot. Yeah, I was gonna say in March, <laughs> Oshiru Gonoyama fighting for the honor of being my number two. Just saying. Okay, that should matter. It, it, I I for one now am gonna be invested in this <laughs> you show by you show update. Oh, we, who's the number two? We we have the first item on the checklist for the next tournament. <laughs> who who get who wins the favor? Yes, who wins right. the my favor? So my favor. Oh, Hokuto Fuji four, five, and six. So I did I'm not sad. I did not say Hokuto Fuji Yusho to Maria, though I came really close right here when he was three and one, uh. and I saw it was Turn of Fuji the next day. I'm like, okay, if he beats Turn of Fuji, I'm putting that in all caps. And uh-huh. they didn't happen. And then it sort of fell apart. And then instead, what I said to Maria was Hokuto Fuji Kyujo. Yeah. Um, now, the good news is it was not the ACL. Which people were saying at first, and I'm glad it wasn't because I'm like, we won't see him again. We won't. He'd be done. That would yeah. be it. Um, and it wasn't the fall because like, if you watch the replay, like he is clearly something's wrong bef- while he's standing up. So right. Something, something, something happened and then he fell. Something cracked or broke or fell out of alignment or rubbed the wrong way while he was in mid-fight. And it didn't, like... I, of course, naturally, I looked into this very very intently. Of course. I didn't see any weird bends. Like, he was, like, pivoting on the knee a little bit. But, so, for the most part, it should be a finger coach regular injury. But any injury, and this already happened to Hokuto Fuji, could knock you down a peg. Yeah. And this is... What sucks about this is he had such good persistence and power. He comes back, like, this stack right here, strong pushers. He outpushes them. He outwills them. When he fights Kirishima and the Gyoji goes flying, <laughs> that was a crazy back and forth that mass. Was... He had it on the belt. Kirishima had to dig deep. Yeah, I was really surprised to see the belt come yeah. out. We know he can do it. He but, can do it. But it's yeah. not like his preferred way to do things. Yeah, but it, that, that match was epic. And he, like, Kirishima was like, oh, crap, I got to dig. Yeah. He made him dig. Yeah. 
Um, but and then Hoshiryu had to be violent. It's yeah. not Hoshiryu's fault. Not, I'm, I'm not. This is not like this is not like Chiyotaryu and Akisiyama. Yes, this, no. Uh, Hoshiryu was just doing his sumo. Yes, I don't blame Hoshiryu, <laughs> but it does make him look very violent. It, just the way it looks. I'm not even saying it's yeah. because he is. It looks because Hoshiryu did like the blast the out, blast. and then you see Hokuto Fuji like collapse on yeah. the floor screaming. Also, also was the and this is this is on brand. Like Hoshiryu blasts and then walks away. It's just like we're done here. Yeah, like I don't even yeah. care. It's you know, like it's like um, beating someone in a sword fight and then just wiping the sword yeah, off walk, and walking, walking away. away. The guy's bleeding on the floor. It, did, it had that look. And it, again, if Hoshiryu knew it would happen, I have a feeling that he would. Yeah. he would have checked. He and does actually care. He does care. He's you know he like he is like smiling like ninety nine percent of the time he's out of the ring. Right. So. No, no, no hard feelings, Hoshiryu fans. It's all good. <laughs> it's just like there was no hard feelings in Tate, on Takakesha. We just understand the greater picture. Exactly, um, exactly. The greater picture for me is he's going to be down there. And we're not going to have any Hokuto Fuji U shows for a while. A little while. I'm going to wait and see what happens in March for that one. <sighs> yeah, I hope I hope he uh, recovers quite well. Hopefully he recovers. Hopefully it's a manageable injury. Um, we don't need any surprise retirements. Well... This was a rough tournament for both of us in terms of our favorites. Yes. Because we have some other guys who, though they did not get injured, um, they're getting demoted and probably going to retire. Yeah. It's gonna be at the bottom. The bottom <sighs> is a rough day. <laughs> this was a rough start of the year. It was like I'm. It was like spring cleaning in January. A little bit. But hope to Fuji. Hope everything's better. Hope I get to see you in March. I hope I get to see you again. Yeah. That's all I can say for now, and I just want him to be healthy. So, Toby Zaru, <laughs> from one extreme to the other, seven and eight, and my God, if that was an eight and seven, yeah, I would be talking for 20 minutes about it. I know. And it could have been an eight and seven. It could have been. It, the first third of that match, Kota Nawaka was scrambling. I know. Kota, it would have made it so interesting. Oh, man. And then Kota Nawaka gets the belt, and then... Toby Zaro's leaned over, and then Koto Nawaka pushes down on the back of his neck with such force that he spins when he hits the ground. <laughs> I was like, wow. Koto Nawaka was fierce. Yeah, that was and a fierce move against a guy who gets under everybody's yeah. skin. And this is something that we learned about Toby Zaro, though. We learned a lot about Toby Zaro in this that, tournament. Like, like, we, already, we already knew that there was the monster inside, but I do not know a man alive who could return that look to Taro no Fuji until Toby Zaro looked back. It's like, come down here and start something if you want it, to start something. That, okay, so let's <laughs> let's talk about that match then. So, you know, you see Taro no Fuji charging at Toby Zaro like a bull. He did do the kick, but I think it was the slap and the poke in the eye that actually started the anger, not necessarily the kick. Kick didn't help. And he knocks him, you know, Taro no Fuji knocks him down. And, you know, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, Okay, Toby Zaro is probably going to feel a little bit of shame. He's going to be looking down, barely bow. He met him eye to eye. Eye to eye. And then, you don't see this. It, it depends on which coverage you were watching. Some coverage didn't show this. Taro Fuji still stared at him. And Toby Zaro whips his head around and go, pretty much looks at him like, what? Oh, man. I was like, oh, oh man. Toby Zaro has got a mean spirit in him. And he wants to win. He's not the, the goofy monkey we think he is. This man has got like a, I'm going to win at all costs and I'm not afraid of you. Even if I get beat up, I'm still going to stare you down. Level. It's a, so again, like we knew particularly once he started jockeying with the Sanyaku level that he understood on some level that he needed to serious up. Yeah. He was still wild and crazy. And again, that's part of his brand of sumo. But there were, there, there's a couple of moments before this that like the, the fight would be ending like he wouldn't be smiling. Or like the like he'd walk away and like there like there's still a little bit of intensity falling off of them. This is when it's like it is clean. Yeah, it is. And again, not just like he can you know maybe you stare down anyone else, anyone but Taro no Fuji. Maybe maybe Hoshiro, you give him the look. They, they got a little bit of beef him, but to go to to go to King Kong, <laughs> right? To go oh, they the Godzilla is the yeah. is the is the internet term for Taro no Fuji, the kaiju. The kaiju, to, yeah. St- to stare him back and to be like, bring it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was like, whoa. There's some beef there that goes well beyond sumo. We know that there was the whole Taro no Fuji got, de- or uh, Toby Zaro got dehydrated on the tour and people were blaming Taro no Fuji. But there's probably other stuff too. That, this is like a real 
dislike of one another that goes beyond sumo matches. I would love to see those two fight again. I really would. Yeah. Because I like the... I like the anger. I just hope Turner Fuji doesn't kill Toby Zaro. That's all I hope. Well. But Toby Zaro, probably, even if he broke his arm, would have got back up and stared him down. I wouldn't care. The only way to stop him would be to kill him. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I like this side of Toby yeah. Zaro. So, so, but the other 14 days, um, it's, again, a 7 and 8 in this blender is, it's not bad. So... I love the fact that they gave the seven seven on the last day to like you can get back in there and you can do it in the best way possible. That was yeah, a little, they gave a him little, quite an opportunity, a, a bit of an opportunity. Um, so he does have more traditional sumo chops that he's been showing here and there, and so he fights Midori Fuji. And that was a pure parry fight, pure slap push sumo. He outdoes him. Um, Ryuden gets his belt and he finds a way out of it by just doing traditional sumo. So Toby Zaro is building out these traditional chops. But then comes the chaos that is still there. Him, Shodai, and Ura. I want to see them fighting for as long as they're still... Because the the three of them, <laughs> they're just feedback loops of chaos. They're all running around crazy. <laughs> you just don't know who's going to like come out on top. Yeah. There's, a, there's like an interesting pairing there at the Maegashira 4 yeah. level. And part of, part of what you were saying about do whatever it takes. So... Winning against bigger, stronger people, Nishikigi, Kimbozan, and well, and against Kirishima, he just catches Kirishima cold. Yeah. But all those fights, it was lateral movement. It was all balance. You know, hit and shift, hit and run. So he looks at a fight. He's like, "What do I have to do to win?" That's sort of that's Hakuho light. I'll yes. say Hakuho esque brand of not on that level, but the mindset of. I'm not like I'm not just gonna meet this head on, and then what happens happens. I'm gonna find a way to win this, right? And I'm gonna be running scenarios through my head. Yeah, and then you add that layer of anger. Yes, it, it brings it, it. It separates him from Ura in that we we have compared them in the past yes. because they're both chaos Asians, but Toby Zaro is this sort of sneaky this little is- angry. And Ura's just happy yeah. to be there. Yeah. And then you look at Abi and, you know, uh, it's like Abi's angry, but he'll do it with a smile. Right. It, all, it, all, it's so good. It's so it, good. It's so, so good. Yeah. So I'll acknowledge that maybe Toby Zero doesn't fight fair or clean or nice. And that certainly will give him some detractors. I respect that. I understand that. Yeah. I understand the detractors yes, as well. I can, I can understand that mindset. But um, it's entertainment. Like you need yes. somebody to be the bad guy. Yeah. This is, again, this is the thing. If all sumo ever was was two people charging at each other and then a Jiori Kiri win. It would be boring. It would be boring. If it was all like really good guys wearing their capes yes. and like, you know, extending a hand when the match is over, yeah. it just wouldn't be the yeah. same. And I'll say this for people that, that I am less of a fan of or a fan of everybody of 42 Opinions, even though we may not say that sometimes, we didn't actually mean it at the moment. Yeah. Uh, that like, again, you need this variety. You need this, this is the, the breathing, beating heart of sumo. Yeah. And so, you know, you'll have people that fight in a way you don't like. And so what you do is that you watch them get beat and you feel better about it. Exactly. <laughs> There's always a way to There's feel good. I mean, Toby Zaro drives some people absolutely nuts. But think about how much emotion is invested in that. Like, that makes it fun. Yes. Even anger is yeah. fun. And yeah, Yes. And for those people, just just put that clip of Taro Fuji throwing him out <laughs> onto the ring and then staring him down. Just put that on a loop. Yeah. Put that on a loop. Like you put your Takakesho you shows on loop to feel good. Yeah. Just through that throw on a loop. You could probably, you could actually make a really big compilation of Toby's are getting thrown out of the ring. I know. Somebody needs to do, do that. Just make that. Make that clip compilation. It'll be like 40 minutes long and just put that on every time you go to sleep. Yep. You'll feel great. Right as rain. <laughs> exactly. Let it happen. Sumo, guys. We're all here for sumo. Yep. Sumo's a fight, everybody. God bless. And God bless Toby Zaro for really, in a, in, a, in a tournament where there was so much crap going on, forcing us to pay attention. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> he will make you pay attention to him. pay attention. So, we will go to the complete opposite end of that spectrum. Yeah. I don't pay attention to Shodai anymore. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, oh, Shodai. Eh. 4 11 on Shodai. Um, so... I feel like the textbook tell on this entire story is Shodai beats Terunofuji 
and then Shodai loses to Shonan Naomi. <laughs> That's Shodai. Can there? That is like, I don't even need to describe what Shodai is anymore. He beats the guy who wins the U show, fights him with sublime Ozeki level sumo the way he was back in the day, and throws him out of the ring in a way that you're like, oh no, is he? Is, is he to, hurt? Did you break him? Did you break the toy, Shodai? Yeah. yeah. And then he fights Shonan Naomi, who's still cleanly in his slump face, maybe coming out. And he just grabs him. He's like, uh, what do I do now? I and then Shonan Naomi, like a, a year later, throws him out. Exactly. It's, it's like, I don't feel like fighting today. It's, so here's here's a little bit of something that I saw that I'm like, huh, that doesn't match the pattern. Okay. So when he fights, when he fights a Tommy Fuji, he's fired up. So that was a fired up loss. Which we don't see much. We don't see much. So there's that something that Charlie like, he's like an artisan. Like he picks the days he likes. <laughs> yeah. So he goes, he goes to Terra and Fuji. He's just like, I'd love a Kimboshi. I think that would be a fun thing. And I he goes mon- and he gets it. Right. And he gets money from that. And he so. gets money. You know, then he goes to, yeah, then he goes to a Tommy Fuji. He's just like, I feel like putting him in his place. I don't think he deserves to be here. And then he loses. And then he loses. And he look the look of shock on his face. He wanted it. Yeah. So that hunger's there. The talent is there. It's just Shodai decides what day he he has it and has it. So, in in defense to him, maybe he doesn't have as much control over it as we think. Yeah, there could be an injury the, the, issue. Um, or maybe it, this is like a sort of a motivation thing that yeah. is, that he could still be lost in the woods ever since he fell down from Ozeki. He just doesn't know how to find and, the fire anymore. And, you know, so we, we, we always mention about he's just here to have fun. We like him with less pressure. I still do. I, I prefer this type of Shodai to the Ozeki Shodai where he was completely desperate Eeyore all the time. Oh, yeah. That was have, When was bummer. the last time you saw an Eeyore slump out of him? Yeah. I, yeah. You know? He's in a mentally he's in a better place. Maybe he's not mentally in the best place for good sumo. But he's getting somewhere. He's getting somewhere. There's progress and there is a fire. Now, is he going to fix this? Does he want to fix this? Is Does he know how to fix well, this? Well, that's those are the questions that if we knew the answers to, then we could like make better predictions for Shodai because I have no idea. No idea. I will also throw him one more bone. Um, the Sudagi show loss was a robbery. Um, th- to, to credit, there was a lot of the Manoese were called right. That one was called wrong. Right. And so Shodai had to fight twice against somebody that he may not have wanted to fight to begin with. Right. So... I'll give him. I'll give him that one. I'll give him the Atami Fuji, and I give him Terano Fuji, and then the rest of it is just him being crazy chaotic. Which let me just say, since you brought up wrong calls, Uro's finger definitely touched. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. In the Toby Zara yeah. match. By the way, both of them doing spinning weird slow. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so like, so Toby's or Toby Zara thinks he has Uro where he wants him, and while Uro's like flat in the air, he finds a way to just. Push, rotate. Yeah, rotate and push Toby Zaro enough to throw him out of the yeah. ring. These are like physics defying things that happen in an Ura match. Yeah. It makes you think like the matrix is matrix is real. It's not a fake thing, like somebody can yeah. do this. Him and yeah, Ura Hoshiru. Toby Zaro did it a couple of times. They yeah. did some real these people, they have a they have a control of their bodies which defies conventional reason yeah like their bodies move in ways that no one else's bodies move yeah. shodai has a little bit of that he used to have more yeah but in any case shodai um four and eleven even with this climate you're probably gonna fall down a little bit yeah um and we'll see you see where you land and then you get to fight again in march and he'll be fighting lower ranked guys so maybe back up. yeah maybe that's a good thing for maybe him maybe it's good bless you shodai just Keep keep throwing curveballs. Keep us guessing. Yeah. <laughs> it's more fun that way almost. Yeah, exactly. So we had mentioned poor Ryuden before with his He got and killed. He got the demo- there's too there it is too dangerous for him. You know? It this is this is the you know, this is the you're a big fish in a small pond, but here's the ocean. Yeah. That's Ryuden right now in January. He just he um, cannot hang yeah. up at Mike so, five. The Kim Bozon win? 100% his brand of sumo. He gets the belt. He p- applies the pressure. He drives forward. Kim Bozan is just smothered and out. Well, let's keep in mind, too, that Kim Bozan was injured the whole tournament, too. So Some days worse than others. Yeah. Um, but every other time. Every, like, so people had the game plan on Gonoyama. 
like they had a book on like here's the book here here's here is the beating Ryudin for dummies. Somebody third wrote edition. it. Yeah, somebody wrote it right before the tournament and passed out copies to everybody. So, yeah, so he and he I mentioned this with the Town of Fuji thing, like heart and soul on display, fighting for his life every day, making people sweat and put the pace on them, and then still losing. Uh-huh. And like everybody knew. Everybody knew what to do. They knew how to handle his pressure. They knew even when they were losing how to get out of it. Yep. They knew to keep the belt grip off, even if he gets the belt grip on, how to get out of it. I was, I have never felt so bad for <laughs> someone getting their butt kicked in a while. <laughs> it's like, hey, buddy, sorry, this is not your tournament. No. You better go back down to the lower rank. Yeah, it would, it's like it would almost feel better if he gave up halfway through, but he didn't. Yeah, or if he like withdrew. Yeah, you know, it's that... It's that it's that scene in anime where the where the where the hero is getting absolutely beat up and you're like you don't have a chance against this guy. Yeah, he keeps yeah. getting up. He's like, oh, I'll save everyone. He like, gets smashed no. down again. You're like, no, no. This just is, stay down. This is Frieza Vegeta. Frieza Vegeta or Videl and Spopovich. That that's a that that's a that's a one fifteen. <laughs> okay, so it's not the level of uh, Videl and Spopovich. Okay, oh, it's close though. Yeah. That's a that's that that is the well. Think is, about Rude and like not getting up in that one match. <sighs> was that today? That was right? the last day. Yeah. Yeah. So like even that was like the cherry on the top of the Sunday. Like bit. you're also going to get. He thrown. did. He did get back up. He thank did. God. Thankfully. Thank God. Also, but yeah. Really glad there's no day sixteen for him because he, he needs he needs to go home and take a break. He does. He does. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever see a golden sombrero though, that's Videl. Yeah, that's the Videl Spopovich fight. Okay, I'm I'm holding that one oh, out. Man. Yeah, for somebody. So yeah, that this is just this. Conve- I'm gonna do. I'm doing air quotes. Conventional, complete, one-sided beatdowns of all time. Yes. Um. So anyway, anyway, let's talk about Nishikigi. I guess you're a five west, eight and seven. So we had mentioned before going in that both Ryudin and Nishikigi were veterans trying to sort of channel their second wind energy and see how it goes, and that could not be a more different result. Um. And, well, at least in terms of taking potential into performance, because Nishikigi was an eight and seven, almost a nine and six, but Wakamoto Haro wasn't having it. Again, like you yeah. said, Wakamoto Haro was just like, you don't need to win this one. He's just like, I'm going to win it anyway. You um, know, it's amazing that Nishikigi, being as old as he is, it's just he keeps himself in there. It's like, no, this is my caliber. I'm going to get my yeah. Kachikoshi. Yeah. He, it's like he, I'm not he, going away. He grit this out for it. It he, was, it was all like, also like he did it his way. Yeah. The Atami Fuji fight, right here. This was a long fight. Atami Fuji's pressuring. He, wa- Atami Fuji wants to win. He's on the back foot. Yeah. And Nishikigi's just like, I'm gonna dig deeper. I'm gonna be stronger. I'm gonna be better. And that is why he won. Yep. And that is why he got eight and seven. Yeah, that's a day, huge difference. Like the people who beat him were the people who could either keep him off his game had a better game or just completely blasted him out of the stratosphere before everything started right he didn't get a chance to even and settle in he doesn't even have a chance so these are the bigger things that i don't know if nishkigi's ever gonna have an answer for but well, he's, he doesn't have to you know like he's at no. the end of his career so like everything is a bonus at this point yes and you know he can only go down from here at this you know like towards retirement but it, right now Everything is a bonus. Getting the eight and seven, going as high as he can, just seeing what happens. Yeah. So he's he also I'll I'll give him the outside chance of still surprising us. I think that with these veterans, sort of the the larger trend is do what you can with what you got. Yep. And considering the amount of fire in this tournament that he comes out of that building, that's a very good sign for him. He could have been like any of the others, you know, who got slapped around, and he wasn't. He's like, I'm going to I'm gonna hold strong because I belong here. He, sheer will. And now he'll get a nice little promotion, like, to a higher spot. Yeah, he might. So he might get the third Sanyaku slot. It's going to be him or it's going to be a Sanyama. That's, like, like, cause there that's is, what's tough, right? Because there is only two other Kachikoshi you scroll all the way up. So he's number three. So if they're just going to do the first three people to get Kachikoshi, <laughs> he's back at Sanyaku. Now, if Sanyama, wow. if Sanyama had won on the last day, so if Sanyama beats Daisho on the last day, he would have got double it. digit wins beating another Sanyaku person to do it. That would have been cut and dry. Now it's just weird. Now it's a weird 
gray zone. Now you have to like you have to like sit down match by match and, and you have to say like did you know who yeah. really earned it? But who, yeah, you're like okay, this guy beat us on Yama, but if you look at this, the quality, it's it's a whole trigonometry well, thing. Well, to come back and and get nine wins after beating, oh, you see, just, like it's a whole. It's too much. Is, It's confusing as hell. I, yeah. I'd say flip a coin if you're doing guess the bonds. Okay, that's about as good as. Yeah, it you're you're, get. All, you're all gonna fail because Wrong. no one's gonna guess this right. I know. They're going to put Toby Zaro and Sanyaku on the seven and eight. <laughs> I know. Could you imagine? <laughs> God, that would be wild. That would be wild. But so very, very well done, Nishkiki. This is going to possibly put him in an undesirably high rank, but he's in it. To, he's in it to fight. Yeah, he wants. He wants it. Yeah, like there are some like there are some people that are they're just here, and there are some people that are like, no, 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 give me it. He's had years of experience. He's not some green guy who's oh, like. Yeah. Oh, well, this is fun. It's like, no, I'm going to hold out and do my thing. So, well done, Nishkigi. Next, Kin Bozan. I guess you're 67 and 8. Gets to 70 on the last day to show that he's not going to just go down without a fight. As and I thought he was going to. I thought, yeah, I thought this was going to be a fall down against Midori Fuji. Not an easy customer. No. Nope. Um, as you had mentioned, some knee issues. Um, I think it was... I think it was these two matches in particular. There, there, there was a there was a set of two matches. That like at the end of one match, like his knee was really, really bad. He does this. What was I think? I think like the worst henka ever. Almost. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to see if I wrote it down. Um, days twelve and thirteen. So Surugi Show and Atami Fuji's fighting these two guys who are really big, strong guys, and his knee was not having it. He's barely able to stand. So imagine that if he had his knees on any one of those days, he's eight and seven. Right. That's how close he is. Yep. I mean, to be able to be that resilient with an injury shows you how much he cares about winning. Yeah. Um, and he must be somewhat, you know, pretty skilled to do that too. So he's he's putting the pieces together. He's he's, he's hit that he's hit that stall that some people do. Yep. Putting the pieces together, he's showing more aggression. He's showing more power and focus. He fought Miyogiryu. They had a slap back and forth. He hits Miyogiryu clean. The guy gets launched. I was surprised by that one. Miyogiryu is not a small guy. Yeah, got, I did not got... expect that. Now, is Kimbozan? He didn't do Saitama Sakai, did he? Um, let's find out. But he. Is... I don't know why I thought that, but. Oh, no, this is going to say if it is. I know he's from Kazakhstan, but yeah. a lot he of these... Have. Yeah, he might have been uh, coming on. In... It doesn't somebody, say. Somebody was... Uh... Saitama Sake, one of the newer guys fighting yeah. Miyogi do this tournament. I don't remember who it was, yeah, so but he is, forget that point. He is so close. Kim Bozan is so close to turning it back around. And again, it's like just maybe just a little better footwork or give him healthy knees and he's there. Right. If this knee issue is a minor one, then he's got a little bit of time. Yep. So a bit, a bit frustrating, almost inconclusive with the seven and eight, but oh, where he's getting there. Yep. He's getting there. So. Here's the mystery of Megashira 6 West, Shonan no Umi. Um, 4 and 11, he was not Shonan no Umi. No, something is wrong. It. Something is wrong. Uh, but what? He has no tape? He doesn't look like he's limping? So maybe maybe he got sick too? Maybe? maybe there was some unseen injury? Maybe there's something, you know, maybe his girlfriend dumps him the day before the tournament? Yeah, like... <laughs> some, there was something that happened to him and it just took all of the promise and the the hope and the progress that he's been making for the time we've had with him and just yanks it away yeah and i'm always surprised when i see him like he's a monster of a man he's huge he shouldn't lose some of the matches he's losing and he looked pretty listless i mean he was having shodai days until he fought shodai yeah so this is what makes it even weirder is that he ends strong beats a tommy fuji not a not an easy task on any day particularly the last day when you've already been trounced um so the loss against tomokaze here told me okay something's up so some of this could have been it was just just wasn't his tournament maybe just a step behind or something but you lose against tomokaze a guy who is hurt hurt <laughs> he's barely hanging barely on barely hanging i'm like okay some this this streak right here there's an explanation for it. Oh, even uh, Endo. He lost to Endo. Yeah, he did. Endo back back. had a horrible tournament. Yeah, like, yeah. So you, this is, ugh. 
We need to wash this bad taste out of our mouth. But yeah, he needs to go back to the drawing board and figure out whatever it was. And yeah. just well, I'm I'm hoping it's some weird anomaly, an illness, something happened that just threw him off his his rhythm. Yeah, maybe it was a rhythm thing. It was a rhythm th- because there's there's nothing in the way that he fought that resembled the way he fights. No. And everybody had were shrugging their shoulders with question marks yeah. like, "What happened to Shonan Aumi?" Bizarre, but I'm I'm hoping come March this is all a bad dream. Yeah, you get to, some some guys have got to forget the tournament they just had and move on. That's that's the hope for Shonan Aumi. I'm 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 putting put a little money on him. We'll see how he goes, but he's gonna it, drop. So he's gonna drop. Yeah, so it'll be somewhere comfortable, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, speaking of drop. Um, Ichi Yamamoto, Mega Shira 7 East, 5 and 10. We were a little afraid of this, but, but it got us our Twilight Zone match. Which we may never see again. Oh, it's, oh my God. It so was the, amazing. There was that, there was that like two to three seconds stint. Once the match started, they were doing the exact same moves on each other. And they had to have known that people I, think this because I, why would they do the same moves? Like there was no I variation. I I feel like that was simply a natural occurrence. It that it just it just <laughs> happened that way because two people who look the same and fight the same and act the same are just at the same spot at the same. It was a, like I was like, are we going to open a singularity into the universe? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was amazing how like excited I was right before it started, just watching them face oh, off was, against each other. I was hyped about this as soon as I realized it was going to happen. Also, shout out to Kintamiyama who puts the Twilight that, Zone music on the replay. That made that made everything so much better. That made oh. that match so hype. I'm oh. like, this is this is amazing. And then his comment at the end: "This never this happened." Never happened. Because <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately for Ichi yeah. Yamamoto, especially in the first week, he definitely looked like he didn't belong. Yeah. So here's here's what's interesting. So Ichi Yamamoto fighting and looking like Abi is the joke. But the way he was fighting was a lot more like Chio Tairu did when he was on his way down. Mm. He would push hard. Sometimes that would work. Usually it wouldn't. Then he'd pull. Yeah. Always the pull. And, and then that sometimes worked, but usually it didn't. And then from there, it would just be a scramble. And his feet are flying all over the place. All over the place. He had no footwork. Yeah. So the thing is, is that if you're... If your brain of sumo is, I push really hard, that doesn't work. I pull really hard, that doesn't work. I don't know. You're going to get a 5 and 10 at Mega Shira 7. <laughs> yeah, and before you know it, you'll be right back down in Juria where you belong. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully this is nerves. Hopefully yeah. hopefully he goes. A little, he flew a little too high for what he's supposed to do. Yeah. Because um, he was, when he was lower down, part of what was so exciting about his ascension was that he was doing a little more. Right. It was more la- better footwork, more lateral movement. So it felt almost like a regression back or that his sumo was getting more exposed now that he's fighting better people. Right. He he has a oh no show vibes. A little bit, yeah. You know, like powerful thrust. He's not as powerful as Onosho, show, but powerful thrust, but like the feet. They the just feet. fly in the air. He's yeah. always on his tiptoes. It's like you're trying to like, if I just get on my tiptoes high enough, I'll be able to ascend Top over the them. guy yeah. <laughs> and like crush him it's like what are you thinking he's yeah so i feel like we all feel like we got what we wanted out of him yes um in a way it's almost exploitative <laughs> but yeah, i was gonna say but there's hope that he takes it he downloads it he works on it he iterates it it's, i feel like it's a little too soon to say right i'm i gotta i, I still got a one foot on the hype train but well, you you wanna you wanna be positive with him in I particular. Do. I do. He's a, I have a soft spot for him. So well, two tournaments is a pattern. Yes. So we we have until March to really opine. Yes. So up to uh, your move, Ichi Yamamoto, and please don't pull. That's not the move I want you to do. <laughs> Look, even Tohakadu stopped pulling. Okay. Oh my god. I was god. watching some of his matches. He all of a sudden became a pusher thruster. Yeah, well, he was he had some of that before, but he just. He was like playing patty cake with people. Now, he did do some pulling, yeah. but there was a lot more pushing and thrusting. We might, so We might see him back. We might we'll see, see him back. We'll see what happens if he's a new man. He, I'm, I'm. He was looking like a new man. Cautiously optimistic, I'll say that. Yeah. So, I will extend my cautious optimism and bordering on blind optimism toward <laughs> Asaniyama, who starts out 7-0. and 0, And I, for one, am like, finally... Finally, it's happened. Finally, there's nothing in his way. 
He's got a taped leg, but he's fighting through it clean. He's fighting like he's fighting like he he came in a time machine. Yeah, twenty twenty, and he's fighting he's the old Osama, old Sanyama, but with the new grit. And then he turns his ankle fighting Tamawashi. With injuries, they just snowball. Like once you get your first injury, you overcompensate with a different body part, get another injury. Before you know it, your whole body is susceptible. Like, when you turn an ankle, that's usually because something else is weak. It's not to say you can't just turn an ankle on a regular thing, but some other part of your body is weak if you twist an ankle when you're being that dominant. It could be the knee, could be, I mean, he had all the tape around the calf, but it's like, uh, this is not working out for him. So he does come back, thank God. I was like, please get the Kachikoshi. And he gets it against Goniyama. (laughs) <laughs> and then they give him a Tommy Fuji, and I'm like, okay, just do what you can. He beats a Tommy Fuji. I'm like, okay. To come back after being out for three days and get nine wins just shows you something about him. If he had gotten this 10th winning at IA show, I would have been like, who cares? Right. Who cares? He was out he a couple just, days? He what? Just he just would have lost to the top people anyway. You can't just, right. It's like it never happened. But the final loss at IA show is going to, again, make the whole signing thing just a little weird. But I am... I don't know. I don't know if they'll do it. I'm So when I was writing my notes and I was thinking about Takayasu and I said to myself, don't think about the Ozaki thing. How much of that applies to Asanayama? Same. How much of this is if you're just going to be so injury prone like Takayasu, if you're just going to have, if it's just a matter of whether or not you can put it all together, you know, you can be, you can be Hakaho. You can be you can be better than Akaho, but if your body isn't going to let you, you're not right. And you're gonna unfortunately you got to accept that. And I well, he certainly doesn't want to. Oh no, he's he's he is, fighting until his body falls apart. Yeah, it's so it's it's like will it fall apart when he's in Ozeki or on the way? Yeah, that's really it's, the big question. Just think if he had not gotten demoted the way he did, do you think he'd be Yokozuna right now? No. Yeah. He still, he was still lacking something. It's the the this version of Sanayama three years ago. Yes, if Sanayama had this mentality, yeah, back when he won the cup in front of Donald Trump, mm-hmm. not a problem. He's he's he hasn't been that guy. Like even before, like when he won that U show, it looked like the sky was the limit. He immediately fell off right after that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the the, the the expectations got to him, and he just... He, he got Terutsuyoshi. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it was just he was a half step behind when he needed to be. And this is what this is what Kirishima's going through. Yeah. A half step behind when you need to be two steps ahead. Right, and the really talented, exceptional fighters, they're never in a spot where they're even vulnerable. Teru no Fuji, you never questioned it. Uh, we didn't watch any of the other guys ascend to Yokozuna. There wasn't a question, but there's always a question with these yeah. guys. Always. Yeah. So, 2024 is young yet. Maybe we, maybe Asanayama finally has a streak, but I think for now, I at least need to say, let's just get him for 15 days. Yeah, <laughs> let's let him have one full tournament let's, before we say anything yeah, else. Let, let's see him build something up, have a, have a nice little stretch without injuries, and then maybe we can start talking about other things he could do. Yeah. Uh, but for, until then, holy crap, 7-0... Yeah. Then just throws himself a uh, like a five match handicap just for kicks. And <laughs> just to come back. Just and to come back and win more. He's something else. He is fascinating. There's a reason why Hakuho thought he would be the next Yokozuna. There's something there. So- something there. That's what it is. So, um, you'd have to ask Miyagino Oyakata if you think this person will be a Yokozuna at some point. <laughs> but Hokuseho is two, four, and nine. With a le- with a knee injury, and after five days of leaning, <laughs> uh, he goes Kujo. So, I charitably maybe that lean was in part due to the knee. Well, he apparently did have the knee injury in the last tournament, so this he didn't get injured in the tournament. So maybe that's why he leaned so much in the last tournament. Yeah, there's I don't know. There's you can only blame the knee so much for a lack of aggression though. Of course. And, well, so, like, with the knee and going out, and I think he's safe 
just because of how disastrous the lower ranks are. Maybe maybe he's fine. Maybe he's safe. Maybe he rebuilds. Maybe healthy knee, healthy me. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. You also don't know like what's going on with that knee. Like, is it something that fixes itself on its own, or do you need a little intervention? I don't know. Big, <laughs> a lot of a lot of question marks. We got a lot of things sorted out this tournament for a lot of people. But then we got new questions. But Hokuseiho, we get more questions than answers, and a lot of unresolved stuff that's going to go into March. So put 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 a pin in that one. Yeah. Pa- pause on that. Pause on that. So next up, oh man, was I so happy to see this. Uh-huh. Hiro to Umi going from six to seven to eight to seven, beating Toby Zaro and Abi. He really wanted it. He wanted it. And he this he, is, he yeah. really grinded it out, man. Yeah, Toby Zaro would have been seven and six. He was on the cusp. Mm-hmm. And Hiro to Umi wanted it more. Uh, so fighting Hokuseiho, Hiro to Umi just pushes up until the lean breaks. <laughs> I was like, wow. Lean breaker. Been, lean breaker. Um, he he outpaces Mitaki Yumi with speed back when Mitaki Yumi was still fighting, which was impressive. Um, out belts Endo, which eh, I'll give I'll give some of that to Endo, but there's there's a little bit of um, you know, a little bit of uh, there was a shade of Endo that showed up. Yes, definitely not maybe not as maybe not as absent as Shonana Omi, but definitely a the same effect. But, yes. So here to Omi showing the whole package. Of everything, which makes me very happy. Um, a lot of his losses are just getting uprooted. Yeah, they're just getting. He's just getting blasted. He's getting dragged and yanked. He's, he's a small guy, so he's yeah. always got to be afraid of. It's it's a small frame though. Like he's three hundred pounds. Right. It's a small frame. It's so like I was I was make I, I made the same note. He's just like he's just too small for this stuff. He's the Midori Fuji thing. I'm looking at him. And it's like you're kind of big. <laughs> so it's like he's like a big small person. That's kind of Ura too. It kind of, Ura's in that same boat. Yeah. In that, like, they're they're big enough that they're not just gonna fall over, but they're small enough that if you're really really strong, you can just dictate pace. Right. You can just get under the arms and go whoosh, whoosh and that's what's happening to him. So, where Ura gets around that by being crazy athletic, throwing wild stuff, Hiro to Umi, if he gets that defense is short up. Yeah. I think the results will follow. Yeah. And, you know, he's got a lot of exuberance. So I think sometimes that gets the best of him. That's where the defense breaks down. He's yes. like, so I want to win this match. And impatient. Then, impa- exactly. Impatient. So maybe just a little bit more time. Go back to the drawing board. Really think this through. Do what the top guys did. The top guys won because they got calm in some yes. of these circumstances. I agree. He doesn't have that calm yet. He's not confident that if he's not doing a whole lot of stuff that he can just take control back. So he's progress still. And an eight and seven is clawed back from a six and seven. Very, very good sign. It, it's ultimately a good result. Ultimately good signs. But you know, that's a that's an eight and seven. That's an eight and seven with a don't don't take this as a win. You know, you get the win, but then you treat it like a loss. Right. Mindset. You know, th- there's a couple um couple of people ono sato saniyama like they'll win and then they go to the they go to the uh they go to the interview room and they're just like oh yeah i, I wasn't doing my brain as sumo so it might as well have lost yeah like that kind of a hunger but <coughs> less excuse me in yeah. any case well done here to Omi. uh so next making sure nine east were you as heartbroken by this yes me takiyumi just disappeared it was he in the beginning i'm like okay this is nice there's the hunger there's the speed thought maybe he was going to do then, something and then he just he just wastes away yeah he literally like faded into the distance like he wasn't even there i forgot about him at some points yeah. so he was so loses against takara fuji right here takara fuji is more aggressive than he is in this match which you're talking about a former ozeki yeah. What? Well, and I now would... he's Magashira 9, and he's fighting a guy who's probably going to retire. Yeah. And he had less enthusiasm. I I don't... It, it hurts, because it looked like he was back. And yeah. Then he, and then he leaves. I, I just don't know if Mitake Yumi can ever come back. All the yeah. things that have happened to him, all the things that he's been through, 
Sometimes it breaks you. A little bit. What? What's? I feel like something happened though, because the day one match with Maysay, it's a Tori Naoshi. Yep. Maysay, Maysay brings it all fifteen days. If you're not bringing it, Maysay wins. Yeah. So you better bring it. Right. And Mitakeyumi brought it twice. Yep. You know, Hokuseiho leaning. Mitakeyumi says, "We don't lean here," <laughs> and just carries him out. Yep. And then it just falls away i mean injury could be like there could be a an injury is why he got kicked out of ozeki so yes. maybe whatever this injury is is a lingerer but some people don't have the will to fight through it like hoshuri was a maniac for fighting with a busted knee being at the top and having to fight all the top guys maybe mitakiyumi doesn't have like the grit to fight through an injury maybe maybe he's at the bottom of the well yeah Maybe this is just all he can muster at this point in his life. Ah. I know. You don't want to think that, but that's what it seems like. I mean, it, does. it makes sense. He's just like Shodai at this point. Yes. You can literally see him giving up in matches. You can. <clears throat> it's not just, oh, he got outclassed. It's like you see his face. It suddenly becomes resigned as he's getting pushed out of the ring. You're like, what am I watching? What has happened to you? So I'm not feeling too optimistic about him. Spurned I, again. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be making any bets on me talking no. to me. So he, he, we're right back to square one. He needs two two tournaments of of positive show before he can do that again. Yeah. And I mean, he's probably going to fall. I'm not too much further Yeah, because there's a lot of bad scores. Oh, yeah. So. We, we, you turn that page over and you're like, oh. Yeah, I, I'm looking at him like, okay, he's probably fine. Probably a little fine. Someone For else now. is fine. We just mentioned. May say, nine and six. He's back. He's back. He's good. He fights um, Shimazu Umi, who is fire. Oh, yes. Deny Shimazu Umi his, uh, his special win. prize. Yeah. Yeah, and it would have been a tenth win, right? Been- it would have been double digit wins. He would have gotten that out, uh, that fighting spirit. Good for Mace. <laughs> yeah, Mace got the fire. This is the the return to form. So we had the he had the really bad tournament in November. We're like, you shake that off, you rebuild, you do what you do best, and everything will be fine. And that's the nine and six. We, yeah, he did what he needed to do. Um, him and Koto Shoho may be our new brawl fights. By the way. They, they didn't go into it like, it wasn't like a full Yutakiyama versus um, Chiyono, Chiyono Kuni. Kuni. Not that level of just look, make sure there's no broken bottles nearby. <laughs> but the two of them had a slap at each other. And there was a moment that they were just. Mm, Where they're like, sitting there like, you know what? I'm about to really fight you really, right now. Yeah. Like we're about to just start choking so each other. Keep an, so. eye out, keep an eye out for that potential rivalry. Um, and they say must be getting sick of watching everybody go yeah. back to Sanyaku so did, and not him. There's a couple of lapses. He loses the Miyogirio. He loses the Ono show. So just there, there are those people, are lapses. Yeah, there are some some missteps along the way. So he's not perfect, but he's now he's rebuilding. He's, he's in heading the, in the right direction. Heading in the right direction, and not just scraping the wins together, but like fighting on his terms, which mm-hmm. is you want that. You want that at a Mesa. Welcome back. To an extent. To an extent, yeah. Right. So, from here on out, we're going to be in this weird feast or famine. And with an 8 and 7, you would think that we wouldn't be talking about it for Tamawashi here. But allow me to point you to Wakamoto Haru, Kirishima, <laughs> Nishikigi, and Onosato. Right. Which would make him 12 and 3. <laughs> Which is kind of on par for Tamawashi these days. Yeah. Like somehow, when he's low enough, the man is dominant. Yeah. Well, he was doing so well. They, th- they there was a few people down here because there, that, there's that middle, that all lower middle. Everybody, it's the wasteland. Yeah. So everybody up above, like you were saying, like there's three or four people that have a kachikoshi in general to fit the three Sanyaku slots. Yep. So when you're going to get those concentrations of wins again, is the double digit Mikashira. Which is another reason why they were paired up against the very elite, because you're not going to want to pair Hoshiryu up against somebody who's like four and eight. Right. Never want to see that. It's boring. You look at like it would be, it would have the same result that you're like, why are you throwing the, why are you throwing a bone to these idiots? Give them somebody who's got some real fight. Right. Who's got some real fight? A Tamawashi who, who right here is seven and three. Yep. So they give him Wakamoto Haru and Kirishima. 
Which right. is well deserved. Yeah. It sort of has the same result that you're like, you have to go that far down. Unfortunately, he didn't get his rematch with Terano Fuji. No. I would say more to Terano Fuji's benefit, but I would love to see that. That's what I'm saying. Is like Terano <laughs> Fuji dodged a lot of bullets this tournament. A few bullets. I would, I would, I would say only about like a third of that was planned, though. And a lot of yeah, the other some stuff of it just... is if they could be favorable, they were. Yes, but they also didn't have a whole lot of options because of the injuries and you know his stable mate, stable so, mates. He does belt stuff against Sugi Show, which threw I think every single sumo fan off kilter um so he does he's one of the few people to beat asanayama clean now like the thing is that asanayama hurt his hurt his ankle on the defense Mm -hmm. so this wasn't like asanayama hurt himself and then tamawashi took advantage tamawashi hurt him put him in a position where he got hurt uh not like not like chio no kuni arm throw but like (laughs) just just as a result of fighting Asanayama lost and in addition turned swole his ankle up. Right. So all Tamawashi just being the old badass again. Um, so some of his losses that weren't getting like thrown to the wolves, like he, he can still bend people backwards, but it's not not the same. Not the same anymore. So he's doing the veteran bag of tricks things, which are getting these good wins, but as a result, what's happening is that there are some people that are sort of able to fight their way back in. Yeah. Like Meisei or Hiro Umi, the scrappers. Who beforehand they wouldn't even have a chance. Right. Yeah, that Noda was not looking quite as dynamic not as it once was. So he's so Tamawashi's ceiling may be a little bit lower than it was in the past, but Well, the man's almost forty. Almost forty. Crazy. Crazy that he could fight at this level. Yeah. He could beat Asanoyama as a forty year old yeah. man. And good news for us Tamawashi fans, the way he fought here, he's not going anywhere. No. No. Even, he's not on the retirement watch yet. No. No, that dude is never retiring. He is. He has so much sumo left for us, which is exceptional news because he was on the he was on the dip. So now this there is was him. a moment. Yeah, this is him saying like they again. He did so well that they're like we got to stop him. We got to stop him. We just give him some losses. <laughs> we don't want him in the U show race. Oh, get out! All right, so well done, Tamawashi. So Sadano Umi six and nine, Megashira ten west. The question for him and for Tamawashi was fading veterans. Do they have what they need to go forward, or are they going to struggle a little bit? And Sada no Umi was a little bit more struggle versus shine. Yep. Um, when he there are some fights, he had some real crisp, great sumo. You look at him, and you're like, that's the guy who made it to Megashira three a year ago. Mm-hmm. But more often than not, it's it's just the people are stronger and they're faster. And they're hungrier, and he's slowing down just a little bit. And it's very apparent because, you know, like with Tamawashi, he sort of fights back. You can see it with Sadanumi, like, oh boy, he's outmatched again. He's outmatched. Like there, there, there is a, you know, who this guy brought a gun to a knife fight kind of yes, a moment that there, he's just like, oh crap. You see it on his face. Yeah. You're, he's like, uh, whoops, yeah, no, this isn't gonna go over well. So, the good news though is that like he's fighting the fade. He's not yes. content with it. He's giving it back. It's just sometimes it just crashes into him. So the good news is he will likely hold on for a little while longer as the veteran who needs to put these young whippersnappers in their place. Yep. Which is a little important because we'll be losing some of those this tournament. Yes, we are gradually losing more and more veterans. It seems. Yes. So there's, there's a few veterans here that are holding the line, and then there's a few veterans that are falling down the line. So speaking of somebody else who's holding... Holding on for dear life. Holding on for dear life and holding on the belts and lifting people into the ceiling. With a busted, busted knee. knee. <laughs> Sudagi Show, nine and six. God bless him. Oh, man. I love watching him fight. So he has a real rough start. Uh, I, I'm, I'm coining a new term. It is the upper lower rankers. Ah, So I like it. We have Takano Show. We have Meisei. We have Koto Shoho. Props to him. We have Tamawashi. Not, I'm not going to put Oho on the list. I'm going to pencil his name in for now. These are people who are down here, but they don't belong. Right. The, ono Sato is also on that list, B- but he didn't fight Ono Sato, fortunately for him. Yeah, very. That would have been an eight and seven. Yep. Uh, so it's this weird anomaly that's going on that people are, like the people who are down here, they're, they're like, oh, never mind. 
I'm, I'm getting my stuff together. May say is just like I'm getting my stuff back together. It's I'm, like a transitional. It's a transitional place. It's them dipping down, and then it's the bobber goes back up in the water. Yep. And so there's a there's a few people this tournament that like really cleaned house down there, and as a result, there are some people that who could have done great did okay, and there are some people who maybe would have survived otherwise. But unfortunately, had these extra five losses tacked on. Right. Sort of. This is what happened all the way at the top. We were mentioning that, like, you know, if you have to fight Taro Fuji and Kitabayama and Hoshiryu and Wakamoto Haru and Kotonowaka, you're just like, okay, I basically have a Makakoshi before I can fight anybody. Exactly. <laughs> this is sort of a of, of an anomaly. At least the way people were fighting in January. Right. That there is the same group of people who are just thrashing. Double digit wins, looking really dominant, and fighting in ways you're like, you don't belong down here. Right. And so Surigisho gets saddled with that, but still gets a nine and six. Yeah, could you imagine? If he like imagine like imagine if we had we had like Chiomaru down here. Yeah. Or Tohakuryu or that, that Roga from November. You know, that's eleven, twelve wins. Yeah. All and Surigisho's this- done this before, like a couple tournaments ago where he had eleven or twelve wins. Yes. So yeah, I mean he he's he's in the right spot for him as far as like he can he can hang down there and do pretty well, but he's not quite ready for almost anybody at the top. No, no, there's definitely a ceiling there for Sudagi show, but very hardy pickups and throws against big people. We we there's some there's some air underneath wrestlers today. So Sudagi show <laughs> is holding the, it's that it's that tochi notion strong man energy that i mean we got we had taro fuji back yeah but there's no one <laughs> no one is tochi notion. no one knows no one's tochi notion that the, just the way he makes it look so easy we'll be talking about him forever people will be like who's tochi notion oh yeah in a few years they're like who is that who's <laughs> what are you talking about tochi notion is the best don't you dare he just sells wine what's the big deal yeah he's a georgian <laughs> guy who sells wine why do you keep bringing him up anyway sudoku show really good um, we'll see if it's a spark and a fade, but he definitely, he came. Yep. He, came he, he kept himself on one knee. <laughs> yeah. On one knee. Somehow. All right. So, oh, 10 and five. I thought of you every time. Oh, won. Yeah. So this is like the most consistent. So when he did something like this before, like there'd be some days he'd be really, really good. And some days he'd just completely fall apart. Yep. But the thing is like, even when he lost, he fought in a way that was smart and sensible and he just got outmatched he got outplayed so um when he was when he was also like he, he was using his brain like it, it was there was a lot of positioning there's a lot of like mindfulness that hasn't really i was gonna say that there that's what he had been lacking yes. for a while yeah when he was fighting he was fighting sada naomi like sada naomi having a bad spot like he he angles he repositions like oh like he would have just pulled before he would have just flailed around but he's like he looked around he's like i need to move this way to turn this around so he's st- he's still way on our two 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 tournaments in a row don't talk to us list right <laughs> but this is tournament one yeah at least he started something finally. this is the start of something we've been waiting a while for him to perform this way yeah i'm just like so like right now the way it is you give me a nine and six like this in March, I'm back on that train. Yeah. I am back on that train. I think maybe he wants to show off his legacy background as well. I think, well, I, there was, this is the way it is with these people. Sometimes there's just some turning point. Something clicks. And something then it starts happens, to work. And it all starts to work. Um, so this is, oh, ho, very promising. Yeah. Looking good. They had to. They gave him Kotonowaka. They gave him Wakamoto Haru. They had to, they had to put a, they had to put the the soft brakes on him. Yep. To keep him out of harm's way. Otherwise, he's twelve and three. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, uh-huh. There's a lot of people but, down here. You're looking at me like some of these losses are not fair. There, there was potential if they didn't like start having the big guys clamp down on him to have a whole bunch of lower rank guys with twelve wins. This could have been, this could have been a disaster. Yeah, it really could. Have. And it was January. Uh huh. Maybe these guys know a little bit more than we give them credit for. <laughs> As you're looking but at. anyway, well done, Oho. Again, it's just like I'm gonna I'm gonna write my name on that club card, but I'm not handing it to you until March. Yes, agreed. Please, please, Oho. I want to be back in this club. Yes. 
I want to renew my membership. Please. <laughs> Please. So speaking of, another 10 and 5 down here. A surprise. A surprise 10 and 5. Pleasant. A welcome 10 and 5. Yes. And do this again at March and I'm back. It's the exact same thing. Taka no show. And the way he was fighting here was the way he was in Sanyaku. It was the first time we've seen it in what? Longer a year, than a year, two yeah, years? A long time. And like his his specific brand of push sumo, like he, like he sticks to people like glue. He moves with them. He's not the strongest, but he's the most like he knows how to use his power. Yes. The angle, where to push, where to move. Where to be. Where to be. Yep. So like when they counter, he's not there. They move out of the way. He, he, it's, it's sublime. And that like, that was the kind of sumo that kept him in Sekiwake for like a year and a half. Well, apparently he had an ACL issue, which I never knew. Ugh. So he's been hurt for quite some time. That might've all it's been. Is that if he had an ACL injury, I don't know how he didn't. It's a little strange. Like, can you tweak an ACL or something? Well, it's a ligament. I guess you can stretch it. So maybe he did that because he never really missed enough tournaments to get knocked out of the top division. So apparently he's been fighting hurt for a long time. That's a, that's a terrible way to fight hurt. But yeah, this is, this is a very good sign. And and beats Konoyama on the last day mm-hmm. for that ten and five. So it goes to the statement. Statement underline. Mm-hmm. I'm coming back for you. And he's going to create some more stress up top for all these guys who've got these ambitious goals uh-huh. because he was Mr. Sanyaku for a long time. For a long time. So maybe he's coming back to he's reclaim his control. position. Again, come March, he does it again. I am back on board. <laughs> back on board. But like, I didn't like but beforehand. I didn't leave like for Oho. Like we left because we're just like you're just hurting us too much. It's too much. But for like for talking else, it's like you don't need our pressure. Right, we're just, we're gonna let you do your we're, thing. We'll do your thing. We'll, we like it's just like we, we got the binoculars out. Uh, we're watching from the distance. We're in a tree. We're in a tree. Like, how's he doing? Don't say anything. He'll hear you. <laughs> <laughs> very very j- quiet speaking. Yes, a Takanosho, very good sign. Yes. Um, so from here on out, it's gonna be very good sign or very bad sign. <laughs> unfortunately, these guys know how to uh, really make a statement in <sighs> either direction. Either direction. Mio Giryu is now on the warning list. I think he's still in the top division, but not by much with that five and ten. Yeah. Back to back Makakoshi. So I've always stated that for Miyogiri, it feels like he's always the same. He doesn't get worse. He doesn't get better. It's yeah. just everyone else around him is getting worse or better. Right. So that depends. Like he can't control his own destiny. Yeah. So like on one hand, he's not going to be fading. He's he's always going to be scrappy. He's always going to be fun to watch. But on the other hand, if like everyone else around him is improving, if they're getting stronger, you get the younger people come in. Because people don't have weird ACL injuries for yeah. a year <laughs> that nobody knows about. Nobody knows about. <laughs> yeah, um, he really has lost the ability to determine what his score is going to be. Yeah, and so that's that's not where you want to be. No, because you'll be forced out of the top division, and you won't really be able to say that something in your sumo needed to be perfected it's like no my sumo is good it's just not good enough not good enough There's and nothing i can do to increase my yeah. abilities and it is when you get the the veterans at that age like there's there's only so much they can do it's like all of their regiment is just getting to that point of fighting yep and they can't push further they can't get harder um some of them manage it but it's the exception to the norm exactly it's the circle of life yes unfortunately i was i'm nah. uh March is going to be rough for me. Yeah. If yeah. Miyogiryu goes. But, um, you know, if, 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 you, if it's between fading and everybody else getting better than you, like, what's the difference? Right. You're getting a 5 and 10. Right. As, you know, as long as you can fight on, I think that's all he's going to do. That's all he's going to do. Yeah. So, when the new guys come up, maybe you get a couple wins off of them if you can manage to stay manage above. That. Treading water. Yeah. Treading water. Exactly. So, good luck, Miyogiryu. March is going to be... Should be make or break. Yeah, sure is. So, Chiro no Umi, 7 and 8, makes your 13 East. Um, I felt like, so, similar to Miyogiri, it's sort of like the same thing. It's, like, it's, it's not that he was bad. It's that his good wasn't good enough. He is very new. Yeah. So this is a sophomore slump. Yep. So, some people, they feel the pressure more in the first tournament. 
other people feel the pressure more after the first tournament. Yeah, and he was unflappable in his first tournament. He was he, he was a delight, a, tr- a treat, a dream. Mm-hmm. Here it was a struggle, but he still had that fun belt sumo, able to impose himself even against bigger opponents. Great transitions and how he moved. He was still like, confident. Confidence. He's chasing people. People chasing him. Moving around. Lateral movement. Like it's, you're looking at all the all the same pieces that were in November, but in November it felt like there's a bit more of a like a an aura well i think some of it is you know they always talk about beginner's luck right maybe some of that yeah there's a little bit of like hype around you like you're more hyped everyone else doesn't know what to expect from you so they kind of you know the the pressure's off because it's like oh he's just he's a new guy now you now you've proven something you've gotten to this higher rank you've stayed in the top division now it's just a lot of things can go wrong. Yeah, now the expectation's higher. Now you have to... Now it's just like, well, you figured it out before, now you get to do it again. Right. And it's a little harder now. Exactly. And he still managed a 7 and 8. Yeah. So, yeah, again, also, like, the last two days, he was he was 5 and 8. He could have just collapsed Rolled out. Rolled over, yep. Um, but they give him two decent fights. I'd, I'd say for him, Shodai is a pretty game fight. Oh, absolutely. So, to, if you're down all the way at Magashira 13. Yeah. So... Not a yeah, not a gimme by any cases. So he he rallies back. He keeps himself relevant, and like but the way that things are, like he may just be it. He may hold. Yeah, he may hold rank. So a good a good way to go into so now he's going to go into March with the problem he has to solve, which is exciting for us to watch. Oh yeah, but probably not something he's looking forward to. No, or maybe he, he is. Yeah, I mean it depends on what kind of guy he is. We still don't know enough about him to know if he like revels in the challenge or if he's like, oh, this stinks. Yeah. So, good luck. Um, good fighting. Didn't work out completely the way we wanted, but it's good. Good enough to stick around. Which is all you can do when you're this young. Yeah, and this this amount of double digit losses are surrounding you. Yeah, there's some more yeah. beginners like so. Endo. Mega Zero 13 was 5 and 10, like you had said before, like a, a ghost of Endo showed up. I think the injuries were bad. Uh, his mental state, the distractions on him mm-hmm. had to have played a factor. Yeah, he um, was he wasn't quite as bad as Mitaki Yumi, but there was like the disappearing Endo as well. Yeah, the, some it felt like there were a couple of matches that like he was able to pull himself together in mid fight. Mm-hmm. And then like Endo showed back up. So, like, the first few seconds of the fight, Endo's just scattered-brained. You can't figure it out. And for, for somebody who's known for their techniques, for their instincts, yeah. to not have that edge. Ugh. Yeah, it just, it it was a little heartbreaking to watch him, like, struggle, but to a point where you knew he wasn't going to win the match. Yeah. Like, you, you watch his match and say, yeah, he's not he's not going to uh, win this match. Yeah, he's, not, he's, he's chasing. Yeah, exactly. But some, some, uh... Some some sparks of life, at least. Again, it's a 5 and 10, not any worse. But unfortunately for him, this is probably the beginning of the trip down to Jirio. He's probably going to be just caught on the other end of it. So, right, and he hasn't been to Jirio. In a very long time. Yeah, like he probably not. I don't know if he's been to Jirio in the past couple years, but I think he hasn't been there since he was last there, like coming up. Yeah, let's see here. Mega share, 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 all the way down. Look how many Kamasubi. Mega share, mega share, mega share, mega share. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He hasn't been to Jurio since he came oh up. Oh my goodness. Here's finally I found Jurio. What year was that? 2013. Okay. Let's just think about that. That was almost 11 years ago. Boy, yeah. Th- they had talked to him about. You know, another Yokozuna that never was. Yeah. In any case, somebody with this pedigree, you would think, would take one look at Jirio and then turn the other way with the cup. You would think. Now. If he can. Ono Sato. uh, uh, Wakataka Kage and Hakuoho are also in Jirio. Bad news for him. But Mm -hmm. I think double digit wins. It's not a. It's an afterthought for him. Yeah, so, because let's say he just loses to Hakuoho and Makataka Kage, he could beat everybody else. Thirteen to two, not bad. Exactly. <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope that, that's what that happens. That is my optimism that he's going to be Jirio one, and then at which point then he gets ten wins and he's back and 
hopefully here for another year or two. Right, and we never think about it again. And just like, oh yeah, he just it was, and we're just like earthquake. It, it, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Get out of here. So anyway, Endo, rough time. So, Koto Shoho. Not rough time. Not rough time. 14 East, 9 and 6. So he comes back up at the Jirio Yu show, and he's just like, I'm a new man. And we're like, prove it. And he proved it. He proved it. He proved it. 9 and 6. Really? So a lot of it was things just seem to click again. And also, he's doing this, like, bear hood grapple on people. Mm -hmm. He's getting in their grills. And just sort of, like, dumping them over dumping them over so he was always aggressive almost excessively so which is like but now it's landing now he's getting there now he's closing the distance something and happened by winning that you so he's rallying uh again I, the wakamoto haru win definitely the icing on the cake a little bit of what's going on here so i'm giving this day 15 when takara fuji saying this is probably my last one right so i'm so gonna give it i'm gonna, I'm, I'm going out on a win um and but like looking good yeah. looking solid i'm waiting for him to hit the see where his ceiling is where does the makakoshi start yeah because if he's performing to his talents he should be a lot better than his records have been yes but we we just don't know so really the next test for him is where the adversity hits and the yeah. higher up he gets before that hits the better he's looking yeah but we're at a we're at a good start for him so he's carrying that momentum forward. Which is what they tell you to do. The very basics are just move forward. Move forward. I'm liking it. Very, very good stuff. So Ono Show, who is not in an Oh No Show, Thankfully. but a Oh Good Show <laughs> yes. with a 10 and 5. Um, and there are some of his wins that he's just launching people. This is this is that dominant aura that he can build up. It's like he doesn't just beat people; he makes them look like they don't belong. Which he's definitely trying yes. to do. Yes. So, what is interesting though is the four of his five losses when they threw him to the wolves. So the larger Ono Show problem back when he was in the top five was he couldn't beat Kirishima. He couldn't beat Terano Fuji. He couldn't beat Kota Waka. <laughs> he couldn't beat Waka Madara. So we're getting this weird preview of... Once he gets too high, he's out of luck. He's out of luck again. Yep. So this is the weirdest 10 and 5 for me. Because like, we get everything we wanted out of him. And then like a, like a little bitter aftertaste. Well, remember too, he had two Fusen show wins. So he would have been an 8 and 7. N -n -n. Nope. 9 and 6. Oh, because he had Aoyama. Aoy Again, this is my opinion on it. If you're getting shows are not freebies. What you do it's is true. you look at, and you can disagree with me. I'm I'm a bit hardline on this. I'll admit that. But you look at who he fought, and you determine whether or not if that fight happened, if they would win. Mm -hmm. One of those Aoyama. That was already a freebie. I think that's a safe bet that he would have okay. won that match. Asanayama. That's the nine and six. Yeah. You're not beating Asanayama. No. God, he's gonna embarrass you. Yeah. That's luck. Yeah. That's so a he's a nine and six with a little luck. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, and that also would have been, again, in the line of you've never beaten Asanayama, you've never beaten Kirishima, Terna, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, that, that's my take on it. And so there is also the X factor of a freebie lets you rest, freebie True. gives you more confidence. So there is. There it, is it affects in a little way. Effect, it, there's, there's more to it than, oh, it's this, you would have beaten him anyway, so it's the same as if you didn't beat him. I understand that, mm -hmm. but giving him grief for two freebies, I'm like, one of those was a freebie, no matter what happened. Right. And the other one was a sunny one. <laughs> and people rightfully put him in his place. So yeah, it was yeah, all so, completely yeah, righted. He didn't get any advantage at the yeah, end. He he has to eat this sandwich of four losses. And yeah. It's like, what are you doing about that? Right. Because here's what's going to happen. These four losses are going to turn into six, seven, eight. If he gets higher. Then he's another Ono oh show. Then Yep. This is why this 10 and 5 feels weird. Yeah, this <laughs> is a like, good point. On, on one hand, this is exactly what we expected out of him. Also, good news, it means that his injuries are gone, and that's probably the more important part. Yes. We don't need any more injuries. We, we are oh, sick of that word. Done of it. Suck. Suck. But anyway, 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 anyway. Speaking well, of which, you have to talk about injuries next. Oh, my God. Our, 
Time for us to start crying into our microphones. This is very sad. This is this is the heartbreaker. Tomokaze, five and ten. So after November, where he was the little engine that could, now he's the little engine that really can't. Yeah. Oh, he our, didn't belong in the ring at all. <sighs> Why? Well, like, uh, you see him some days, and yeah, this is. I was like put him out of his misery just right he just okay. can't overcome at this Some, point like somebody like when he's sleeping just like just like get a hammer and like just bruise something <laughs> just make him stop it yeah. was he's he's never gonna yeah. be like there's the lost hope the <sighs> man who was, was rough yeah the man only had one like maki koshi in his whole career before the injury you know he's he's been destroyed by injuries and he's not coming back so here's what makes this almost worse is that these four out of his five wins happened after he got Makakoshi. He never gave up. No. You can't tell him to give up. No, he and, won't. And he won. And he, like, Mitakiyumi, Ichi Yamamoto, people who are going to fight, well, mm, Mitakiyumi maybe, but these are not gimme. Some of these are not gimmies. And even, even the ones that were gimmies, he's a wreck. Yeah, I mean, he's the guy you would say that he has the biggest handicap there. So, down but never out. You know, he's outmatched, he's outgunned, he has no chance of survival, but he's fighting. That's the reason we like him. It is the reason. We like he him. has the sumo spirit. 100%. But the spirit is not enough. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes. The flesh is injured and taped. He's like Ikioi at this point. He basically is. Ugh. So, back down to Jirio for him. Maybe we may come, never see him again. We may never see him again. Maybe we see him again. I'm all. I'm. I'm just. I'm just bleeding heart right now. No, I, <laughs> I know. can't. I can't it's even. It's too hard. Let's talk about someone else. Let's talk let's about. Let's do it. Let's talk about the uh, somebody who is mathematically the usual runner-up. Let's talk about Ono Sato at eleven and four. What a and, great pick on your part, John. Uh, I was. I. I was. So again, you, you probably. You probably. You probably heard me coping with this very loudly earlier when I was talking about. Look at all this experience they're giving him. Yeah. I'm not upset that he got knocked out of the U show race and I nearly had my pick right. <laughs> what I am instead doing is thinking about how this is such a great learning experience and he gets a special prize. Uh huh. And it takes that much to slow him down. It takes them throwing, I'll say, two Ozeki and a Yokozuna at him. Yeah. To put it, to, to finally speed bump this guy. And he still. I mean, he was nervous as all. Oh, did he miss the tachi eye in Hoshoryu? Yeah, his arms went over. <laughs> you're sitting there and you're like, uh, he's like blanking out in the middle of this oh, match. Yeah, like you look at his eyes, you're just like, oh crap, where there's, are you? There's a there's a funny video of like a of like a there's some there's some like chess whiz of a kid mm -hmm. he's like eight years old and he's like winning and they're like we're gonna bring out a surprise and he bring out like a chess master grand champion <laughs> and then they like the look in the eyes of this guy's kid is just like mommy help me get me out of so here so that's what was that but again like you download that somebody with this much raw talent and power and like the reflexes this is also a guy who's big and tall. I was gonna say he's big. He's big. He's tall. He's got long arms. He's got he's, an awkward body. He's new, so it's like he can get bigger. He, he can, get, can bigger. get stronger. Yeah. So I want I want Hokuseho to sit down with a pencil and paper and think about how you handle a big, weird, awkward body. Yeah, because seriously. Because Onosato's got it. You know that Kisa Osato is grinning. Like yeah, look ear at my ear. guy. There's, I think there was a couple of fights that he was judging it. He was. He was at ringside, and I was yeah. like, look at that. Yeah. He said, "Well, Kisa Osato." historic poker face <laughs> historic Histor like you look back at some of the times like he, he legendary fight he walks away he's just like eh, whatever whatever i'm here i guess it's like wow. i did my thing yeah but you know it's all oh you yeah become, when they you don't become yokozuna on a half ass no when it, when they go back home it's like yeah, get him when hakuhoho comes you better beat him yeah. they there was there was mentioned that like koto nawaka like when koto nawaka sound that Taron Fuji won and they were going to do the playoff. They're like, Koto Nawaka looks fired up. Yeah. He wanted to fight him again. And That's he was that, so crushed. Oh, that, 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 he was like mm, biting his lip on the way out when he was leaving. He was just like, oh, dude, I don't know if he's going to cry or he's going to break something in half. I'm going to say there was probably some holes and some walls back in the dressing room. <laughs> anyway, Onosato's got that spark. And he's gonna be he's gonna be fighting for a long time. Yeah. As long so, as he keeps himself healthy, like he's gonna be the man. 
we can look to Tommy Fuji and Gonoyama now as people sort of ahead of him showing what happens when you get too high. So now what we get to do, we compare what Ono Sato does, how he handles that level of pressure yep. to those two, and then we compare it again <laughs> to Hakuoho and possibly Takeru Fuji. Possibly. But I think he's going to still be in Jurio because he's a little low. But uh, that's so that's that's four hype trains coming our way. Yeah, so when we have like the changing of the guard, we have like a team coming up, not just a guy, we have a whole team. We got a posse. Yes, which we've needed for some time. Yeah, or they're all going to be fighting each other, except the Fujis who will have to fight each other during tournament playoffs. <laughs> yeah, I want to see that. I really want to see stable mast stable mates or brothers fighting a playoff. The Fujis, the way they're going, we may have that sooner than we think. Get to get a sumo bingo card. I'm telling you, <laughs> put all the Fuji. craziest scenarios on it. I don't think I don't think a Fuji Yusho playoff is too crazy. It's we not almost, too crazy. We, when um um Nishiki Fuji and Midori Fuji went on that run, we're like, oh, it's gonna happen, and then they just then they couldn't get it together. Once Terno Fuji's out, it's you know chaos will reign again. Yes. So, one more Fuji, uh, perhaps for the, the last sad time. Fuji. Takara Fuji six and nine. Um, so again, that six, like that was all him, that six, but yeah. unfortunately it comes with the nine and the fade is too strong. He's my Gashira 16. Yeah. So similar to Sada Naomi, like he's fighting the fade, but this fade there's, he can't fight back. Well, he's been fighting the fade for a, a long, long time. time. We were going to get here eventually. So when he loses the Oho, he's down on the ground. You talk almost the same thing that Hoshiryu did. Like there's a slump. Because you know it means something like... So this loss, right? So like I think he knows like the 7 and 8 maybe. Maybe mm-hmm. he can do some deal with the devil. But when he had this loss to Oho, he wanted it. He knew he needed a win. He lost. He's on the ground. The head goes down just a little bit. And at that moment, I'm like, he's done. Yeah. Ed? I think he wanted to be there for Terano Fuji. And that's why he's stayed. He's still here. Well, he... To, to his credit, to the nail, he fights to stay in the top division. Yeah. Up to this moment. And has Takata Fuji been in Jurio since he came up? Because I he might be another one that's not been down one. there. There's gonna be a long list. Megashira, 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 Megashira. Look at all this. Like story history of, of a complete badass. Mm-hmm. And the two of us have only seen the tail end of it. I know. Tail end Look of so this. many things. Look at this. Look at this. I'm still going. I finally found Jurio in 2012. 2012. It has been 12 years. Yep. Of being a complete badass. Strong man, looking good. Schooling those young guys. Schooling people, being there. And it always comes to an end at some point. It's okay, guys. <sighs> it's okay. Maybe maybe he goes down to Jurio, he scraps something together. Mm-hmm. We'll Maybe. see. We we'll don't know. See. This is this is this is goodbye for now, but hopefully not goodbye forever. And if it is, he can hang out with Tokushoryu with a track jacket in the back with Kaisei. Yeah, do some sumo prime time. Do some prime. Yeah, sumo prime. He'd be. Well, he's he's the kind of guy that maybe he's like really hilarious. And you don't oh, know I it. bet he is hilarious outside of the ring. I can almost guarantee it. So, oh well. Anyway. Let's 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 go from awe to ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Boo shows on four and eleven, sixteen west. I I was hoping this would be the moment, but he had some some progress. Like right here, he's four and three. It looks like things are coming together, um, but then he just get out muscled. He gets out maneuvered. He gets thrashed. It's because he's not really Takakesho. It's true. He's not. There's no comparison <laughs> between yeah. him and Taka Kaisa. You got you have Ichi Yamamoto and Abi. You got main brand, store brand. This is like this is like this is like, this is like true value brand. Like you know, there's exactly. Like, there, there's the store brand, and then there's like the discount brand underneath the store brand. Yes, that's Boucher Jean. But only for now. There's progress, and there yeah. is some stuff that he does that's really cool. He has this this like arm grab. So what he does, he, he gets to the side, he grabs your entire arm, he hugs it, and then he just like rotate you which i think would be a great move for taika keisha but well, that's way. It, like that's i was looking at that and i'm just like you know 
Uh-huh. You know, Boo Shozan takes notes about 99 things that Taka Keisho does. And then Taka Keisho goes and takes that one thing from Boo Shozan. And, and maybe like, it you know changes what? things. That's one point for Boo Shozan. Hey. Yeah, yeah be it. Inspire. Come on. Hey. So there's, there is, there's potential there. He still needs time. Yeah, he's still going back to Jurio again. And we say this sometimes that some people that you, you have, you have Ono Sato right above him. He's shooting up like a rocket. This is just somebody who's just trying it. Yeah. Give him time. Give him time. He's what, going back how down. How old is he? Oh, maybe we don't give him time. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know, actually. 95. Okay, so he's still young. 29. Oh, he's not that young. But, uh, yeah, welcome to 2024 somehow. Gee. But, yeah. I'm well, in any track. case, maybe, maybe he just becomes somebody who tries. But yeah. I, I love seeing him try still like shows on. Yeah. I, I ain't giving up on him, but you're so long for now. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next up, Shimazu Umi, a pleasant, pleasant surprise. And everybody wanted him to be, so it's really great when this somebody is, gives you what yes. you want. So nine and six and his first time in 12 years being in the top division. 17 East, looking good doing it, looking like somebody who's been here for a while. Mm-hmm. You would never have guessed. If you if you had shown this footage, people was new to sumo, you're just like, oh, we've been here a while, right? Yeah, he's, he kind of looks like a veteran in sumo, and he also has some cool things he do- that he does. He, the, the way he transitions between graps, between offense and defense, body, belt, forward, back, I was, I was like, man, he's kind of going on. He's he's got the reversal down yeah. too. You're looking at him. He's like, what took you so long? He looks he, he looks like he's just a polished badass. Yeah, like he's he's grappling you. He's looking for the angles. He's always moving, and his footwork is pretty yeah. like pretty yeah. solid footwork. Solid footwork, th- forward thinking. You're like, damn, he's got it. He's yeah, got it. he just needed to get up here. He just needed it. He just needed the he needed the spotlight. Now he's got it, and now he's looking great. He's gonna be our new Akisayama now. Uh, yeah, I want him. I want more of him. I, I was like, him. John's gonna be so happy. I am, dude. <laughs> you you caught it, and it dead on. Yep. The way he's fighting, slick, calm, back. ah, I love he, it. There's a lot to look forward there's to with him. There's a lot to look forward to, and yeah. So in the same way that Chernoumi was a surprise. This guy's a pleasant surprise. I'm just like, I want more, please. Yeah. You know, like you try a new flavor of ice cream. And you're like, a, I need a second bowl. You're, yeah. But you also, like, particularly, like you go to a friend's house, right? It's not your ice cream. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we, we went down to the ice cream shop, and we have like a half dozen flavors. You're just like, I've never had that one before. I'm going to put it in here. I'm just like, oh, this is good. And you're like, we're out. Just, ah. <laughs> now I got to go down and buy I, some. I'm going to go buy some. So now I got to wait till March to buy some. Yes. So well done, Shimazu Umi. So close. They give him he May- almost got the They 10. gave him Mace for double digit wins, so they they wanted him to earn it. They they wanted to test him. They wanted to test him, and that's that's a that's a prop for him too. But anyway, all right, let's get this over with. <laughs> I know <laughs> this is rough. Uh, two for two on my favorites getting injured and out. I know. Great, great, great tournament. January Thanks. was just full of uh, <sighs> punching you right in the today. face. Today. It's okay, guys. I can take it. <laughs> this is part of sumo too. You need to understand. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, true. It's, it's like you watch a National Geographic with a young kid and the antelope dies. You're like, this is part of life. <laughs> Pretty much. I just, I like antelopes in this case. And that antelope is Aoyama at a 0, 7, and 8. That's, that's Videl. There you go. Yeah. Because it looked bad beforehand and it only got that's worse. That's a good point. This is the Videl Spopovich story of so, the tournament. He's, he starts out shaky. It's that, it's that he does as hard as he can and then he tries to find a way out. Um, then he tears his yeah. ACL. Fights Koto Shoho, like stumbles out of the ring, then collapses on the ground. ACL tear. I'm like, goodbye. <laughs> you tried really hard, but you were just a moment away from a catastrophic injury. Oh my gosh, that is a that is a crash out. And, and like in a way, you look at that, you're just like, at least it's a clean break. <laughs> yeah, at least it's like you don't have to have any doubts. You don't you're have to like, push it any harder. Pu- yep, you're it's just like, done. Yeah, you're just like, there is no way out of this. So and, and got, now he can hang out with Kaise. Now he's got his Japan citizenship. He's yep. already got his ties in the back going. He's coaching. He's already doing coaching. Now he gets a track jacket. He gets to be on Sumo Prime Time. It's time. Let's him and it. him and Kaise are gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Maybe Tochi Noshin will come by Taco again. Taco Fuji comes in. We had a whole group. The whole yeah. group's coming back. It's it's a sad thing, yeah. but yeah. then we turn know. you turn the corner. There's Yosukaze. Yeah. There you go. This yeah. is what we're at. This is what we're at now, guys. 
God bless you, Ariyama. He's the one who got me. I told you. He's one of the people who got me in the sumo. Mm-hmm. So this is a this is a pass of the guard for me. Takeda Fuji was the guy who got me into sumo. He was there long before any yeah. young Takakishos came in. So changing the guard, guys. Yep, it's coming it all in one shot. <clears throat> so we got special prizes. We had three, one of each, which is nice. Outstanding performance. The Shukun Show for Wakamoto Haro, as you mentioned. Extremely well deserved. Mm-hmm. Uh, fighting spirit for Ono Sato. Any the newcomers that get double digit wins, they like. They just give it to. They him. just give it to them. It's well earned. And then Kota Nawaka gets the technique prize. Perfect. Three, three for three. Because that's your last one. If you become Ozeki. Exactly. They're Nine. like we're not gonna be able to give it to him anymore. Yep. All right. So before we go any further. Forty two opinions checklist. The checklist. So we did it. We did a silly thing on spur of the moment that we made a list of things during the preview show that were like we want all these things to happen during the tournament. Um, and the checklist was is that um, Abby and the Earthquake Sumo wrestlers all do well. Everybody gets cashes in. They bring the spirit forward. We said that our picks were Takayasu or Ono Sato for winning the whole thing. I came close. Um, we want it, but then we corrected ourselves. We're like, okay, we still want the we still want a Yokozuna. So we wanted there to be a playoff between Ono Sato and or Takayasu and Kirishima. So that Kirishima gets his usual equivalent. You had mentioned that we may have, in subsequent talking, realized that we should have added Kota Nawaka to that. Yes. Yeah, so later on in the conversation, we started saying, but yeah. wait, we want Kota Nawaka to be Ozeki. So we didn't actually say how that was going to happen, but we did put that on the list of yeah. Kota Nawaka being Ozeki. All right. You can keep going with the list, too. All right. So we said we wanted Hokuseho to stop leaning. We wanted, so we first said we want Midori Fuji to Hanka on day one. But we said we wanted a, Tama, a Tommy Fuji to Hank Ataki Keisho on day one. And, and I'm going to get into what actually happened. Then we wanted Hoshiryu to fight Oho. We wanted Kota Nawaka to get Ozeki. We wanted Ura to get an 8 and 7. We wanted a Turi Naoshi with Ichi Yamamoto and Abi. We wanted Asunoyama to get double digit wins. And we wanted Meisei and Hidadomi to rebound. We had, a, we had a long list of things. And you're probably hearing, oh, wow. <laughs> we picked a lot of things that were kind of close. So Midori Fuji does Hanka on day one, and it's Takakesho. So we got a Hanka against Takakesho, but just with a different guy. A different guy. And Takakesho read it very easily, and it was satisfying to me. Um, Takakesho did fight Atami Fuji before going out. So we did get a rematch. It was fair and square. So we kind of got some sort of... A little bit of closure. Yeah. So Ono Sato did get 11 wins and was in the Yusho race for a while until the top guys smacked him down. Smacked him down. So he didn't have all of it, but he got close. One of our closer, like, main picks. What we, yeah. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll be like, I want this guy, but I'm picking that guy. And they're like, the, this guy gets it sometimes. Exactly. Now this one stings. We wanted Hokuseho to stop leaning. He stopped leaning because he's out yeah, of the tournament. Not what we wanted. That, that's not what we meant when we said we wanted Hokuseho to stop leaning. We did get a playoff and a promotion, but neither of them were the people that we picked. Abi is headed to Sanyaku after the passing of his coach. We didn't get Hoshoryu in Oho, but we did get Koton Owaka in Oho. The reason we wanted it was legacy fights. Yes, and those those two guys are legacy versus legacy. So, so we did get a legacy fight. Horseshoes. Koton Owaka is getting Ozeki. Asanyama got nine wins despite the injury. We were very close, close. to getting that double Almost digit. Almost got it on the last day. And I feel like he would have easily gotten double digit wins if he didn't turn his ankle. Exactly. Meisei and Hiraomi both got Kachikoshi. So big win for us there. And as far as the Earthquake guys, Kageyaki did get a 9-6 and six in Jurio. Um, here's where we completely got destroyed. Three items on the list. Endo's headed to Jurio. Takayasu went Kyujo, and Ura did not get an 8-7. and seven. No, he did not. Far so, for the that. most part, we actually did pretty well on the list, I have to say. I, this was, for, for a spur-of-the-moment thing, we did did not bad. We got a few, give ourselves a few half points, but it's just the first time doing it. I was kind of surprised, actually. Yeah, I think impressed. this checklist thing should yeah. continue. Yeah. It will impress, impress at least our, like our general fortune-telling is... It's pretty well done. Yeah. Right. We don't know how to pick Yusho winners no. precisely, but we know how to like talk about the things that could happen. So we're going to take a look at Jirio real quick. Um, and 
it is a lot of high people doing well. Which so, is going to make the demotion promotion insane. This is, it can get, it can, five people right here, I feel like these five people, it's cut and dry. So mm-hmm. there's five people down, five people up. There may be more. So eight and seven, you're in. Ten and five, you're in. in. Eight and seven, close enough. Nine and six, you're doing pretty good. He was in the Yusho race for a little bit. He lost that a little bit. That's fine. Kitano Waka, there. So a lot of these, so these three people, they got knocked down. They're going to come back with a vengeance. It's exciting. Dayamami gets a veteran card. I'm excited for that. Yep. Here's Nishiki Fuji, hopefully less injured. He looked really good. I was glad to see that because I thought we were going to get like just he's, a collapse with him. He puts himself back together and people are going to remember why he was on the list. I oh, think. yeah. He's going to re- he's, a ta- he's a real talent. He's a resurgence waiting to happen. So now we have to scroll down a little bit to Jirio 6 for Toki Hayate with 10 and 5. This is this is uh, I feel like they're not going to give it to him, but it's close. And so if they want to bump somebody down, then they can. Right, like if they're in the mood to yeah. be sending so people flying. If you do that math now, you have 1 2 3, pretty easy so far. Yep. 4 5 so where this is gets mean is either they bump down Miyugiryu mm-hmm. or they bump down Hokuseho. That's so, tricky. So those are the hinges where you have to figure it out and you need your crystal ball. Uh, but the other X factor is Takeru Fuji. Who won the whole who thing. Who won the U show down at Jirio 10? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that. So maybe you do that for number six, and then you put uh, Toki Hayate right on the driver, right on the seat. Maybe you put them both there, and it's just five. It's, they could very well both wind up Jurio so, in the Jiro one spot. Yeah, it could be five. It could be six. It could be seven. Yeah. But it's. I feel like the five at least is a pretty, it's a pretty safe bet. Yeah, five is is happening, which is funny because last time we were like five. That's a lot of spaces. Lot of, now they've set the precedent that they're yeah. cool with five. So something else I'll point out real quick is that we've got person one going down out of Jurio, person two going down out of Jurio, person three, person four, person five. So we got this maybe six. Good news for us fans of people down in Makushta because we have Wakataka Kage coming back up. And so we have one, we have two, we have three. We're scrolling. Mm-hmm. We have four. Uh-huh. So we need this. Both of our people both of our forlorn wayward children are returning, at least to Jurio. But once they're in Jurio, they'll be back up in the top division pretty quickly. It happened sooner than I expected, and I'm glad for that. I yes. did not think we'd see Wakatake Kage for a long time. Hako Oho was like a stinger because it's like we just saw him. Now we have to wait again. Yeah. Ugh. yeah. So good news. Fixed shoulder on him. Good to go. Fixed ACL on him. Good to go. And they're just going to thrash Jurio. They are. I mean, th- the Jurio guys are going to not be able to handle them. They're not. We already saw that happen with Haku Oho. Yeah. So, so good news for the up and comers that we were seeing. Good news for the up and comers that are in Jurio, that cluster of people, and then good news for people down in Makusha that we wanted back. Yeah. So that is that's like six, seven, eight, nine, ten people to be excited about for twenty twenty four. Right. And we just started. Yeah. And we're not even talking about Kiribayama, Kirishima, Kotazakura, Kotonowaka, Hoshoryu, who's still Hoshoryu. <laughs> Not even, not even on the discussion, and they were so exciting. Yeah, that those final four matches. So and we, we hope to see those guys all is, clash for years to come. This is sumo, turning it up a notch. There will come a time, a year or two from now, where we'll be talking about remember when so and so came up. Yep, yep. This is. We won't be in the dregs of all my favorites are retiring. We'll be a, having a different conversation. A new, a new sun arises. I think. Looking and forward to that. So you would you would mention who we're going to be talking about at the end of the year. I think we know. Yeah, I think we do. So thank you, one and all, for being with us. This thank is you our, for bringing us up to almost three hundred subscribers. Yes, we're, yeah. Uh, the the live chats are 
more active by the day. Thank you for doing those, Maria. Absolutely. We're getting some very enthusiastic regulars and new people every time. New people every time. Thank you, everybody, for sticking with us now and always. This is like our fourth year doing this. Yeah, we've been doing this a long time before people started to actually come and talk to us. We we did it for the love of the game. And that's far, as far as I'm concerned, that's just, it's what you say. You stick to your fundamentals. Mm-hmm. You know, the results will follow. Exactly. So, yeah, that's that's a wrap up. We've got February to trench through, but I think we've got a lot a lot of things to look forward to in March. Absolutely. So we'll be seeing you then. Adios.